the direction we're going to go in today. So the sheet specifically says Friday um, until 2 p.m. includes refreshments and dinner, chips and a fish cake or a potato fritter. <laughs> this day school will examine the evidence for the Roman military in, in Cymru and a little bit outside the area. <coughs> and there will be um, there will be somebody here so that we can have a discussion about different things as we go along. Um, and then any questions, please put your hands up because we've got a hell of a lot to get through. So where we obviously need to start oh, is um, simply... Uh, he's not with us. Oh, he's not. Okay. He's not with us. That that's um that's filthy John. Oh, wicked! Look at that. It's clear. I'm trying to get it. Focused. That's fine. <laughs> it's perfectly clear. That's fine. It was all right. Leave it. It's fine. That's perfect. <laughs> that is really clear. That path. That's good. You don't want a medal. So. So the are into things like that now, aren't you? Yeah, yeah. Pat's into yeah. technology. Yeah. technology. Yeah. Oh. Good. Good. Well, it's completely clear from you. Okay. Oh, it's the lens. You know, it's, the, it's the wall, actually. Yeah. Oh, Carl, it's the wall. Yeah. Is this the wall from yeah. the bottom? <coughs> yeah, the but wall's it's fine from here. <laughs> You're not going to get it any better than that, no, Carl. Just there is one other way. Put a screen up. Right, Angus, clean the lens. And if we take oh, this yeah. off here, and we put, we we turn it around. Oh, oh no, it's from last year. Oh. Right. So what we do, we oh, clean the we, lens. We That's always good. So my son always says, "Clean the lens." <laughs> and if I put that there, so it's just getting warmer. You can use that too. It's that's dirtier than yeah. yeah. it is. Invest in one. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, we have got one. Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah. 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 Right. so if we put on, I'm oh, trying to get it. these off too. Leave much. it. It won't make any difference. Just leave it. It's kind of decorative. It's kind of decorative. Oh, it's the light of this. Well, I was just playing yeah, with it. I think it's just the post Oh, that's the best I can get. Yeah. That's yeah. Okay. Yeah. Um, yeah. The longer they leave oh. it, the oh. <laughs> <laughs> it starts to, um, you know, <laughs> melt. No, I don't like that. Yeah, it's time to take it back a bit. Oh, yeah. So, if you just stick with your sheet, you need to probably start by staying in focus. And it's green. Well, that's clear now. Well, there you go. There we go. Well, what you need to do, do is flip, flip the half, awesome. big roll of lining paper, <laughs> <laughs> and put a whole strip of lining paper across. <coughs> All right, let's go. Yeah, yeah. Right, now, come on. Right, um, so the way we're going to, the, the direction that we're going to look at, at is uh, a load of images um, alongside my research for St. Athan and the lectures I've been doing this week. So um, I haven't had much sleep getting this together because there's a hell of a lot of stuff to go through. So for first things first, we're obviously looking at a landscape um, and that line going through there towards the left hand of the screen um, could purportedly be uh, the San Helen. So obviously we're looking very much at mili military stuff today um, and the military stuff of Wales. Um, uh, bits and pieces that I can't find um, within a Welsh context, um, I've obviously had to use um, other examples from outside. Now, this image itself uh, is, is showing an array of bits and pieces of uh, Roman armour. Um, and um, this, is that, this is that sort of uh, plate armour, scale armour that they would have used a bit later. Lots of these sort of examples haven't been found in Wales, na naturally. But the Roman occupation in Wales... Um, is extremely extensive um, and if we look into our own landscape uh, you'll see that um, by looking at forts <coughs> such as Cardiff the link with the Roman road going through the Vale of Morgan um, other examples of Roman evidence that you'll um, find indicated in my own book the idea of marching camps in the valleys in fact there, there are probably up over 20 odd marching practice camps up by Landrid and Odd Wells and there are quite a number by Gethley Geyer on Neath Common. Um, and having marching camps indicate 
or practice camps or temporary camps <coughs> indicates that um, Wales was quite a peaceable peop uh, landscape when the Romans came over here. Because if you're able to build ho forts quite easily, it means that there's not much resistance from people stopping you building those forts. But we'll come on to that in a short while. So that itself would be a fairly um, early style of Roman helmet, um, approximately type of helmet that would be used by um, the um, the earliest wave of Roman soldiers coming over to Britain in about AD 43. But if any of you believe, if any of you believe the subprint that may have been an early invasion in um, AD. Um, AD 39 under Caligula, and obviously we have totally forgotten there about a much earlier invasion that wasn't successful, the two invasions of Julius Caesar in 56 and 55 BC. So we're talking about the period from uh, 43 AD where the landscape very much become uh, Romanized to the extent um, that everyone could be nicely classed as being a Roman citizen and part of the wonderful Roman world. So Roman military equipment. If we do actually get over to looking at Roman military equipment, it's going to be scant um, from the context that we're looking at, from the context of Wales, for example. So it's going to be quite, it's not, there's not going to be a lot of it. And when any, anything's being found in a military context, it's usually being found about 100, 150 years ago, and none of this stuff has really survived from Roman parade helmets to um, equipment associated with um, campaigns and possible conflict through uh, other areas of the Vale of Morgan. Um, and we've got the odd bits and pieces being found at Caleum um, over recent years, but those have been misidentified as well. So we've got wonderful books, um, undoubtedly of, about the Romans, uh, Roman forts in Britain, um, which, which seemed to have been a popular form of study for many years. Um, and you'll find these types of publications out on the likes of Amazon. But can anyone tell me um, the area of Wales that this is actually illustrating? Barry. Nope. <laughs> nope. <laughs> nope. Nope. <laughs> nope. Nope. On your doorstep. Brigade. Nope. No. Which end? No. Cowbridge. Cowbridge. Oh. Cowbridge. In in the <coughs> yeah. In 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 the in the nineteen seventies, nineteen seventies and nineteen eighties, Lant uh, Br Cowbridge was was an area of intense <laughs> and and um, overriding um, as signs of Roman evidence were found in Cowbridge. Um, and even with all that evidence of Roman um, Roman remains in the form. No, no, this is this is actually in the, the heart of Cowbridge oh, yeah. itself. Hmm. Yeah, that's that's right. So sort of around around front of church, but um, the the one the one thing about the Roman evidence evidence um, is that it does come in the form of. Um, you've got some structural remains over here, um, and what they're doing here, they're, they're overriding the, excavating some of the banks <coughs> of, the, of the fortifications that used to be around Cowbridge itself. So these, these are lots of these houses along the main high street um, and the east and the west gates of Cowbridge. What you do find is lots of the remains are either hidden behind in one shape or another. And this is what you're looking at. And this is the type of stuff that was being found in the 1970s <coughs> and the 1980s. And there's lots of it. So this nice little chart here, this, this, this lovely map here, which, um, which if I zoom in on it, problem is I can't do, I can't do both things today. So I'm going to have to probably stay put where I am. Well, good, because I couldn't see the screen on your Good. Um... So what you can see here is sort of a, this is this is a type of thing that you'll find, you know, ev everywhere um, on the Internet. It's not it's not massively um, in depth and it doesn't show me everything that I want you to see. But the areas that we're going to look at today, I'll mention one or two of them. If you follow the cursor, we'll be looking at Tom and the Moor that I've actually visited. We'll be visiting the uh, bathhouse. 
uh, Prestatin, um, which has last been descheduled, now deemed for uh, demolition and housing development. Um, so you'll see the images before they go. That's going to be over the next few years. Um, a really nice bathhouse, but they don't need it anymore, so it's going. Um, we'll obviously be mentioning a little bit about um, Cardiff. Cowbridge isn't on here, but it was a military base. We'll be going over to the likes of Clean. Um, and there are other places that we'll be visiting throughout Wales um, that that te uh, that give you a, a sense of flavour of the Roman military. If if I wanted to, right, I could visit all of these sites here. Um, if any of you have had one of my recent, have you all had one of these business cards? This is quite useful. Would you like one? Because on the back is the wall of Sigontium. Go on out. It's, it's the wall of Sigontium. So there you go. Who else wants one? Oh, that's the one we saw. Yeah. Oh, you can have one with a dove coat on. Oh, I want Sigontium. Oh. We got Sigontium. Sigontium. What is Sigontium? What is Sigontium? It's a Roman fort. Where is it? Um, it's Carnarvon. Oh, uh, Who else wants one? Yeah, Pat, Pat's having two to get a complete yeah. set. Oh, for, for the... Anne wants one. Yeah, if we get a prize, we get a set. You do. Actually, if you if you get a full set, there's one with Barry Castle on. There's one with the uh, the Tinkage Wood Burial Chamber. I uh, know. There, there's one with a columbarium on. Uh, there's one with me in in um in a strange outfit. I don't think anyone cares. Right, back to what we were saying. But okay, um, back to what we're saying, right? Um, if you look at, if you even look at that, you get an idea of the true extent of of sites that had a military background throughout Wales. But but the number is more like three or four times that. But they're obviously showing you a selection. Um, for a large point of time, 95% um, of all these forts on this chart were probably only used for less than 20 years. Because what happened, the network of forts was constructed. Um, Wales was a complete walkover for the, uh, for the Romans. And most of the garrisons were completely withdrawn because they weren't required. Ro Roman, uh, Roman agriculturists moved in. Um, Roman um, cultural experts moved in and they bought, basically brought people over to the Roman way of civilization. And most of these forts weren't used. Um, well, they were used for 20 years and that's it. They just, that's it. It's the abandonment. But the forts that were used for a long time on this map um, are Kergibi, Sagontium, because there's another use for them. Even the bathhouse at Prestatin, the military base at Prestatin, the bathhouse was left behind and the military base was uh, demolished. Same thing you could say about Kalian. And us, the military bases are being demolished and the civilians are moving in. Cardiff itself is, is one of the longest standing Roman military forts in the whole of Britain. It, it goes way into the 400s. It's a highly important site. Um, and and it, one thing that needs to be said then is those, those few sta sites standing alone, that's all the Romans needed to have as a military presence in Wales. That's it. So it's... When anyone, hang on one sec, when anyone gives this impression um, that Wales was a warlike country um, resisting Roman rule, um, and the reason why, what, using, you, reason why I'm using the word Wales and not Cymru at this minute is because Wales is a fictitious term and all the terms used for this land were either invented by the uh, Romans or the English in one, one way, shape or form, so it seems appropriate. But one thing, one thing I would say um is that we we and the people of Cornwall and the people of Cumbria as we said yesterday in, in my class um of, of of were very much brought into the Roman ideal and a Roman way of life. This is why we resisted the Anglo Saxons and Normans for such a long time. Kathy Well in a, in a lot of publications they have got the scenario that they've um fighting against the Romans for many times or the use of them actually. Mm -hmm. Certainly but there's no evidence at all. No evidence. No evidence. I did think they would be better off using them against Cotswold than against 
<laughs> yes. Yeah, there's so many things being lost. The reason why I'm resisting this thing about this great sort of conflict between the Romans and uh, the Siluris, or a, a Slugor, which is a name invented by the Romans, um, to describe all these people in the area, because look at it, look at it obviously, okay? Somebody in I live in the South Wales Valleys, right? And you've got people living in the South Wales Valleys that haven't left the valleys in their entire lives. There's, there's men living in the South Wales Valleys, right? And you, you, Alan will tell you this, that, that, have, that have lived, that have lived uh, all their life without leaving the valley once, right? And there's a point to be made by this. If you're doing it in modern day and age with trains, buses and planes and all the rest of it, people back in the period of the Romans, they wouldn't have moved more than two or three miles away from another house. So how can they be classed as a unified people? How can they... None of these, these people, Roman would have come up to them and said, you're a Silura. And they said, what? Well, I don't even know who the person is in the next valley. I don't even speak the same language. So there's no idea that these could be all given the same name. It's just not... Yeah. It's not credible. Do you see what I mean? It's not credible. Okay, let, let's let's say something really silly, okay? Um, people of Cowbridge and people of Lantwick Major, I know full well... What the hell is he doing? He's trying to get in. He's Push! Pull. Oh, Push! Oh, Push! 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 <laughs> Are you joining us or what? Because I'm in the middle of a lecture. What? Why don't you go back to the Coswell dig and stop annoying everybody? The what dig? The, the Coswell dig. Oh. <laughs> I, I, I can. Goodness me, you've got uh, you've got, got quite a lot. class. I'm sorry. Yeah. Forgive me for interrupting. You've ruined our lives. This is John, right? Well, He's the heroin dealer it. around here. <laughs> um, make sure you get your um out of him now. <laughs> How are you, Chuck? Oh. I'm, I'm fine. We're in the middle of. You, do you want to sit in for a minute? Nice to see no, you. No, no, I've anyway. got, I've got to finish varnishing the mask, and then I've got a guitar yeah. lesson. Fine. Oh, <laughs> right, right. John, John, give my love to your missus. Right, I'll close it. Give my love to your missus, and I'll see you soon. Have a nice time. See you, John. Yeah. This, this is, this is like a blooming car. I've got to close this door in a certain way. If I just about close it, hang on, what's down there? Da, 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 da. Something blocking it. Mm. You just open. Okay. That'll do. Job, job. What is this about people? I'm smack bang in the middle of John, you're a knob. <laughs> right. Right, the the point obviously the point I'm trying to make, if if there's no resistance, you don't need these forts. Right? What 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 you do need is these people um the, the soldiers that are here keeping an idea on trade, keeping an idea uh, keeping a close um, watch on everything that's going on throughout this land. Because if you go over to Pumsant, the reason why there's a military fort at Pumsant is not to fight against local people. Um, the reason why there's a military fort at Pumsant is, is to actually, the military are used to mine the gold. Because those are the only ones with the technology. So they're, they're in fact, in Pumsant, they're, they're blasting mountains away to get the gold out. Um, and you need the military to do that. And eventually it goes over to civilian people doing it. Um, and then the military ain't need a pump sand either. So it's it's the military. The military are here to get the network going. Um, the roads themselves are, are a bit of a red herring. The roads themselves are absolutely bloody useless. Um, the road network in Wales is, is so poor in comparison with anywhere else in the Roman Empire. It makes you it makes you ask the question. What were the people using for transportation? And there's one thing that Wales has that the English don't have a lot of, water. We're using rivers. Okay, The river network is, is massively important <coughs> to the Romans. The river network to the Romans is actually their, their lifeblood. It's their, it's their chain of command. It's, it's, their, it's their credit and commerce. That's what the, that's what the, um, the river network is doing. Okay, The river network is massively important. And if you look at Kaiwent, for example, directly to the walls of Kaiwent, there's a river leading to it. Oh, most of the cases, Carmarthen, it's along the river. The, the, the fort at Lucca is along the river. 
Um, Neath is along the river. Kafili, river. Cardiff, river, 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 river. All these things are to do with rivers, okay? So it's the river network that, that actually breathed life into Roman civilization throughout this land. And there's one other thing as well. What is, what is, what is duly important to the local people is actually um, the link with water and their own sense of gods. Um, you know, you've got, you've got the water, water deity, or, or we think it's a myth or a legend, but it's a deity-based thing. The Kefaldur, the, the water goddess and god, it's the Kefaldur associated with the, with the water. So the Romans are using this network, and the local people are signing up to Roman civilization. Vis-a-vis, -vis they become Roman themselves, and the rivers are key to this. So military rivers, and the other thing about water as well, you can't have industry without water. You, you know that with forging. Um, Pum Sant, for example, you needed the water to blast the mountains away. You can't blast it with dynamite or TNT. OK, um, you've got to use water. The iron industry, the lead industries of the south, water, copper industries of the north, water. It's all important to the Roman military. You can't create mass amounts of Roman military pottery and roof tile without water. Water is key to everything. And, and Wales has got a lot of it. It's massively important to Roman civilization. Um, they did walk a lot. Marched. Yeah, they didn't have trains. <laughs> um, <coughs> you said they had marching schools. Yes. Did they practice marching? Um, <laughs> but, but basic, basically, in Landridnod Wells, in Landridnod Wells, and the common of, of Neath, and Gethgy Gaia, they, they, what you can see is, is where they practiced how to build forts. And at the same time, they would have practiced marching. And they would have practiced parading. They would have practiced all these things. They would have practiced mock, mock, mock fighting. The amphitheater to Killian is, is for mock fighting. Oh. It was, it's, it's, all, it's all... Training. Training. Yeah. Um, it's, it's all, the, all this... Wales itself is, is the training ground for Roman, the Roman military. It's, it's, it's the training ground for the Roman military on the Germanic frontier. It's the training ground for the Roman military in Scotland. It's the training ground for the Roman military full stop. And it's perfect training ground because there's not many people living here. Um, and you're not going to get many people dying because they're fighting people um, who ain't very warlike. Do you know what I mean? It's, everything's in this practice vein. That there is Tom and Amur. I've been to Tom and Amur and I've done a video over it. And Tom and Amur is, is, is massively um, important, like all the other forts, to understanding what's going on with the Roman world. So you can't see it very well, but over here, you mentioned practice, um, Ellen. Over here, that is actually a parade ground. It's not a fort, it's a parade ground. That's where the, 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 there's, there's a parade ground for the Roman soldiers. And the other point as well is, if you've got time to parade your troops around, they're not fighting, are they? Oh, okay, Let, let's just do a bit of a metaphor, right? You know all those nice sort of clad troops outside uh, Buckingham Palace and Kensington Palace in London, right? They, they, they are trained to go to war, but they're, they're on guard duty. That's all they're doing. Nobody's going to kill them. And, and the Romans had time. If you've got time to build big forts and parade grounds and amphitheatres and then have a civilian population around them, right? It's not as warlike as the, the books tell us. The Roman frontier, the marches, that up there is the Roman fort. That there's, there's, it's extended. So you've got the wall here, running along here. But this, this is interesting. The wall itself on top is a modern wall. But if you look at it closely underneath, you get the original Roman wall. They just left it on there. And, you, and you've got a bit of an extension over here. And that there, well... They say that was built by the Normans, but it wasn't. It was built by a native prince. And, and this, this place is actually mentioned in the Mabinogion. Tom and Amur is mentioned in the Mabinogion. There's, there's a palace here associated. This is after the Romans. Yeah, this is after the Romans. They're using the site. You see what I'm saying? There? The R Roman civilization is used as a springboard for civilization. It's used as a springboard for Christianity. Okay, It's used as a springboard for the enlightened way that Wales would become. The, the enlightened way is the Dark Ages, okay? It's the early medieval period. It's Arthur. Do you know what? There was so much going on in Wales. Um, in, in, the, in the Roman period, there was so much going on in the Roman period. There was so much equally going on in, in the early medieval period. 
um, that archaeologists um, have ignored most of it and they haven't been able to find most of it. And when you go into the medieval period, just after the Romans, um, you, you start to look at sites and they, they, there's so much pottery at these sites, like Dinis Powers, like Dinis Powers, they excavated Dinis Powers and they bought crate loads of pottery, not from Britain, from the continent. So this is all because of the trade links that the Romans built up. If the Romans did this, the Roman trade with the continent is all built up. So people are just going, still traveling to Syria or, or getting goods via boats from Syria into the five, six hundreds in Wales. Um, and, 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 I'm and I'm ashamed to say that um, when, when I went to school, um, that um, our history teachers didn't have a clue. Being told that um, there was nobody lived in Wales between um, the end of the Roman period um, and the Normans getting here. And we all believed it. Do you know, I, I, do you know what? There were, I used to have, there was an archaeologist in Barry, right, um, who used to say, oh, right, not much is going on in archaeology um, in Barry before the Normans. Um, and if it was, it was a load of just a load of Welsh rabble wandering around sort of in bear skins and stuff. I used to, we've used to believe all this, right? Used to believe it all. And it's a complete lie. Um, and this, um, it can't, it, it's got to be a lie because the Romans, the Roman idea didn't leave this land. Okay, it stayed there in the form of these forts and in the form of the people building stuff on top of them from the material. It happens with Kalian, it happens with everything. It, it, it continues um, and and the early evidence makes the other evidence and then that's taken away by the Normans and all the rest of it and this is a building theme and there's there's another massive thing to say as well okay and I'm gonna get out of my seat here and I'm gonna take my daps off oh, no. oh they won't shut up you're like, you're like an old woman this when you go here today when you go when you go shh, when you go here today it's more land it's bleak it's ugly it's arrogant it's it's abhorrent i absolutely hate most of the welsh landscape because it's without trees wales is an ugly horrible place to me because no, most isn't. of the most of the landscape is without trees when i see woodland and old yew trees that is when Wales is beautiful because it's still got its ancient landscape. Without the trees, you've got peat building up. And with the peat building up, not much lives there, okay? In the Roman period, to have built these forts, there must have been trees. And to have a trade links here and to have civilization and people living here, there must have been trees. Not this barren, ugly, abhorrent landscape that you find today. And, and it tells you something very keen. The Romans weren't stupid. They built their forts because they had resources. End of. You can't build a fort without resources. You can't build a fort in an area where there is nothing. What's the point in building there in the first place? It's like building a Butlins on the moon. Nobody's going to go there. So you see the point I'm trying to make. I built one in Barry. Right, so here we go. I wanted to put the gravity across there. I did it. Good. Um, Adam's impressed. Adam, when you... Well, it's a place to build Berlin's, isn't it? Right? Not to... <laughs> Moving on. Moving on. <laughs> I don't know what's happened with well, these shields, but they should be red, but I they're not all red. What? talking about uh, Tregaran, you know, that very fair and bleak area, like plains, marshy, you know. Not marshy, and moorlands. And this isn't a Bridgen class now. Oh. Shut up. <laughs> right, this... Is the amphitheatre at Killian, okay? And one thing, one thing I would say, is that these guys are the Purcell Brigade. Um, if you if you go to my book, you'll see a guy with black skin with his uniform very dishevelled, and that's exactly what a Roman military um, uniform would look like. And it's likely that they wouldn't have worn open sandals wandering across moorland um, in freezing cold conditions. They would have had boots that would have been bound with leggings and all the other paraphernalia, not the butch, um, clean shaven legs that you would associate with a Roman soldier, as you can see up there. Well, their mummies probably would have had no thick socks. Yeah, they have. We got, we got, hang on a minute. I'm supposed to do that bit. Um, when we go to Vindaland, you, you'll see examples of, of knitted um, uh, woolen socks. Okay? So you go. 
so anyway, moving on. So um, this this is this is that wonderful, and you've got slide four. We've still got we haven't got to get to 104 yet. Anyway. Um, oh my. So anyway. <laughs> speed up. Right, amphitheatre at Killian. They're, they're, they're doing a reconstruction. Um, military sites in Wales. Um, even though you go to the guidebooks and it says amphitheatre, it's the, the only Roman amphitheatre in Wales. Tom and Amur, the site that we've just seen, has got an amphitheatre. Okay. Carmarthen, the military base at Carmarthen, M Moradunum, that had an amphitheatre. In fact, most of most of the Roman forts in, Brit uh, in, in, in Wales would have had an amphitheatre associated with them. Um, and this is built by the Roman military. Not to see, gl not to see gladiatorial contests between butchmen um in their leathers and sort of um gimp masks okay yeah i know um the the lots of, lots of these lots of these amphitheaters are for practice okay it, it's it's the um it's the bowl for practice it's, it's the area to practice and when they got battle reenactments there it's good they're sort of showing what the site was maybe used for um the gladius there is a practice gladius and they're protecting the shield. Um, so practice conflict is something that the Romans would have done on a daily basis. The Romans can be said to be one of the highly trained machines um, that have ever been produced. But on that note, as with planning for this, I decided that Rome at war... Um, which is a book we've reviewed and it was in the newsletter, right? On that point, Roman military, Roman war. The Roman military was highly oiled to begin with, but eventually the Roman military started to fall apart because of poor leadership. And what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna read, I'm gonna read a little bit of a chapter from this book. So here we go. Roman war. This is what happened to the Roman military as things started to collapse. So we'll give you an idea what happened to the Roman world in Britain from the point of view of the continent. And then at the end, I will read how organised the Roman military once was. So I'm doing this in reverse order. Alaric. Shh, in the back. You and Adam are going to be thrown out in a minute. <laughs> Alaric, a Goth, commanded under the Emperor Theodosius, um, emerged as leader of a force capable of withstanding an imperial army, but still struggled to secure lasting benefits for the Goths. Alaric was a Roman. Alaric was a commander, commanding armies for Emperor Theodosius also a Roman. Alaric may have been from outside the empire, but because he served for the empire, he was classed as a Roman. There's a point to be made at the end of this passage. On the 31st of December, 406, Vandals, Alans, and the Svevae tribes swarmed across the Rhine, triggering the proclamation of local commanders as emperors, usurpers. Stilicho, who was a fine Roman commander, couldn't stop these Vandals, Alan and Sveve coming over the River Vine, Rhine. Stilicho's authority crumbled and his family was eliminated. And so eventually was Stilicho. They got rid of their best leaders under the orders of Theodosius. With it disappeared the main Roman army in northern Italy. It simply was absorbed by Alaric. Stilicho's loyal troops um, joined the ranks of Alaric's Gothic army, which was in fact a Roman army. Alaric failed to obtain concessions from the new Roman Emperor Honorius. And in tw on the 24th of August, 410 <coughs> AD, captured Rome. Rome was captured by Romans. Not not um, barbaric Goths coming over from the border. These Goths were chained, trained by the Romans and they captured Rome. 
This brief sack of Rome was, um, symbol was of symbolic significance. Of greater import importance were uh, Honorius' imperial rivals in Gaul and Spain. Rome didn't care about Rome anymore. Inevitably, local protectors appeared who had to exploit the available military manpower, not just in Italy, but all over the Roman world. And then in comes people who might be called King Arthur. It goes on. Wonderful illustrated book, this. Going back to the page. And then in comes... Um, and then eventually Alaric dies whilst trying to reach Africa with his followers. One consequence of this is that across the Roman world in the west falls into great conflict. The Vandals arrived in Africa in 429 from Spain, another tribe, um, con um, condemning the western empire um, through a decay of great conflict. The loss of North Africa to the Roman world decisively reduced the resources on which emperors could call upon, and to compound the problems, the Vandals used Roman ships at Carthage to dominate Sicily and Sardinia. Again, they sacked Rome in 455, a much more destructive event than Alaric's entry in 410. Without going on any further, you can get an idea of what's going on within the Roman world towards the end of the Roman world. And the point to be made by this is Rome could only be destroyed by Rome. I will always say that. Rome destroyed Rome. Even, even the collapse of Rome um, in the year 476, Rome was captured by a Roman general, general <coughs> called Odatia, who actually sacked it again. Um, and therefore, the official Roman Empire in the West collapses, loses its identity, and people can no longer call themselves Roman within Britain because Rome no longer exists. Rome destroyed Rome. It was not killed by people like Bran outside because those people were trained by Ro the Romans to be in their own armies. That's a very important point to make. Um, Rome, even though Rome fell in August 410, it didn't mark the end of Rome in Britain. Rome continued, as I s uh, uh, continued to be represented by the idea of Rome the ideal of Rome until 476. But again, at that point, everything that's Roman disappears in name, not in representation. Because the likes of Caleum still has a Roman bathhouse still standing to its full height um, in the 1100s. Did they do it in the new Yes, they did. Oh. <laughs> Blue shields, not red, blue. Not all Roman shields were red. Now, I, I, want, I wanted to uh, look, at, look at this one. This is Connovium. Um, and Kathy, if you may put the fire on, because I do believe it's getting a bit cold in this room. S thanks to that silly man coming in, in and his shenanigans. Don't like you. This is Connovium. Connovium. You wouldn't be familiar with this. This is North Wales. Cornovium. And what do you notice about Cornovium? There's a fort. There's houses running off from it. And just up in the top right-hand corner, there's a harbour. Cornovium, like most Roman fortifications, had a harbour. And one thing you could say about all this is that some of you who learnt a great deal about from Roman strategy to subdue the Welsh and the Scottish was King Edward I. You build a castle which has always got access to the sea because if it's always got access to the sea it will never ever be taken. So by learning that and if you've got access to the sea trade and commerce will always continue. Is this a clarification? Is it from the sea? Oh because usually the people besieging haven't got ships. Oh. So that's it. It did. Well, put it this way: if you if you got if you got um, a Welsh army, right, 
Yeah, the, the, we, we didn't really have a navy. The Scots never really had a navy, and nor did the Irish. But the English did. And the, the, the English have always good, been good sailors. So if you put an army, a, 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 a navy against them, it, it's not going to work, right? And, and, um, and the point is, just, yeah, we, we digress there, but I think the navy bit and the link with water is, 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 is very important to this. Well, you can always resupply, can't you? You can always... Re yeah. yeah. Well, you know, well, you can park. Sea, south, mm. if you can get food going, you can get reinforcements. Yeah, it's just that, for me, it's kind of like an open gate. It's not an open gate. The pro the pro what we're talk what we're talking about is with most of these harbors, right? That that gate is controlled within. So if somebody tries to attack that gate, they got no ground to attack from because yeah. it's it's the water gate. Yeah, well that's why I'm here. I'm yeah. learning. It's the water things. gate. Yeah. If you if you ever go to if you ever go to Newport, um, on the train from London, as you come into Newport on the left, you've got Newport Castle, right? I know that's medieval, um, and you've got the water gate. It's sloping like this. If you can supply it this way, but you're not going to be you're not going to attack up a slope. You're not going to attack from water unless your boats are anchored there and they're secure and above you. You've got stuff raining down on you. Yeah. The idea the, and um, and th this is a very important thing because the Roman fort at um, Caer Gibi, Holyhead, has this type of principle. It can be fed from the sea, okay, and it and it's and it and it, it's defended. Yeah. Um, during during the during the research for all this, um, I thought right, I'm not going to have enough slides, but you know, Canovium, a Roman military settlement, um, port and point on the Conway River. Okay, so where is Canovium? We're going. We're going. We're going to. We've got an indication of where it is. Hang on. Hang on a minute. Where's my map showing you? Oh, hang on. Let's go back to the other one a minute. I'm going to go to the map. The map should be there. Yeah, there we go. But go to give you an idea. Right. There. Karhim. Yeah, no, it's, it, it's the Welsh name. Karhim. 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 <coughs> And you can see, you can see, I'm sorry, I'm really sorry the map wasn't in there then. It's all, it's all panned all this. That's Karim. So you can see that there's a river link, okay? It's there. It's on that important road across North Wales. Above it, Clandudno, you've got copper, okay? Towards the, towards the um, west there, you've got Segontium, which has main um, access to the sea and the, and the Roman military fleet. Um, it's an important area. It's, 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 it's linked with um, not only not only copper, you've got um, exportation of stone. It's it's in a key area. Okay, moving on, Canovium. So Canovium, a Roman military settlement set at a strategic point, Conway River, um, along the coastal road between Chester and Carn Carnarvon. There you go. It was occupied with some breaks, um, with a major, um, basically it was built, if we, if we zoom on that, it was built in the time of a campaign um, under Agricola in 77 AD, and it probably lasted a couple of years and it was abandoned, or, or, a, or, a, or a, um, a small garrison was kept there to keep the harbour open and all the rest of it. And the wording there, through to the 4th century, and it said, got the words above there, some breaks. Those are important. Basically, if fort, if you didn't really need the fort, you just have a temporary garrison there and the, and the harbour and the people just continue. Right? You don't need a huge military garrison. It's an auxiliary fort. An auxiliary is somebody who isn't of Roman citizenship. Okay? Um, this is where it gets complicated. That rule only lasts until 212. Um where subjects and citizens are amalgamated to become all Roman citizens of the Roman world. So up until about 212, you've got, you've got legionaries who, who were sort of true blood Roman citizens from the likes of the true provinces of Rome, Italy, uh, Hispana, um, and other places. 
Um, and then everybody outside that was classed as an auxiliary. Every, every country that you conquered as a Roman, they would be your auxiliary regiments, your auxiliary legions, as it were. Um, so they were based there. Um, so you might have auxiliaries based there who were from Africa. And I want to I want to make that I want to make that point. And it's, it's a very important point. OK, if it sounds racist. It's, it's not meant to be. You'd have somebody who was a very dark skin uh, wandering through North Wales as a tradesman or a Roman legionary. Um, you'd be more likely to see somebody who was black than you would be of somebody of Italian origin. And that puts us into the idea of a cosmopolitan Wales before we even think about it. OK, we, 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 we've got people who are of Chinese descent being found within the workings in London a few years ago. Um, we are a cosmopolitan world going back 2000 years. So hence, hence why I've got a, 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 a black soldier on the front of my book. Um, to actually illustrate that because you were as likely to see or more likely to see somebody a black skin as you were of seeing somebody from Italy. Important point. But more likely North Africa. North Africa, yeah, but they're going to be very dark skinned oh, anyway. Yeah, so, yeah. so, um, so, and you've got Nubians as well, so they're going to be yeah. blacker than black. Mm -hmm. So, um, so lots of these sites have been excavated in the 1920s, 1926, 1929. There's a problem there because the I there's a big problem there. Because the idea in the 1920s was to find Rome, not to find anything else. And because most of the sites that are being utilised in the period after Rome um, were, were obviously our, our, our people just trying to get on with their lives and all the rest of it. What archaeologists were doing, they were just dis disregarding all that stuff, getting to the Roman stuff and then saying, oh, nothing happened between the Normans and the Romans. We proved it. So they would just get rid of it all. We probably probably got that evidence at um, Caleon. When um, Sir Mortimer Wheeler excavated the Caleon Amphitheatre again in 1926, um, it, the instructions were to just get down to the stonework. Anything else was to be dis disregarded. But we have writings by Geoffrey of Monmouth in 1136 saying that um, Caleon could be the site of the court of King Arthur because you've got this circular thing, right? Whether you want to believe it or not, we will never know because the evidence was just totally disregarded. So this is the problem we find. And it goes back to the history teachers then. Nothing happened between um, 476 or 410 or whatever date you want to use and the Normans get into Wales because there's no evidence because it's all been destroyed because lots of the work in these Roman sites occurred in the 1920s vis-a-vis -vis, we've lost the evidence forever it's a very important point all these points being made um, it sort of looks at a bathhouse it says about a bathhouse there's been geophysical survey there's been aerial photography and their nearby dock structure roads and so on are going all the way to Tom and Amur there you go. We mentioned that. There's a link. North Wales link. Um, Canovium. The name comes from the Roman work known as the Ravenna Cosmography that was written about the 300 to 400 years um, AD. And you've got the Antonine itinerary. So where are we getting the names from? Look at that there. It's the aerial view of the site. The site's been extensively excavated. Um, but it was covered back up. Um, you cannot see the walls anymore. Because they're under the bank and around the outside. They're still excavating for, for um, graves in the church graveyard. It's all underneath this banking. But what you can see, look at that there. Some granaries over there. You can just, hang on, just look in a bit more. You can. Yeah, there are lines everywhere. And if you look down here, you can see some more structures. OK, you can clearly see them now because I've zoomed in. You can just see some of the outlines up here and the other banks that run. It's probably a couple of series of um, uh, walls, actually. It clearly goes up there. But maybe that might indicate it was enlarged up here as well. This is the typical demonstration of a Roman fort and the site that's been reoccupied. That church hasn't come from <laughs> nowhere. You don't build a church in nowhere, like Lanfranc's church in the Vale of Morgan, 
there was a community around there once, a big community, and now the church is alone <laughs> and a pub. That's all that's there. These these things, on top of a Roman site like Blanfranach outside Cowbridge, good one there. Okay, these are there because they're built using the Roman material to build the churches, and their association with the Roman site because these people are directly descendant from the people. Um, who were last using this fort because what happened at the end of the what happened as things started to fall apart from what I read from uh, Roman war was this most of the Roman army by the 400s um, uh, was a cobbled together army it was basically um, a paramilitary army it wasn't the legions as before and most of these people um, had no idea where they were born and most of these people had no link to where they had come from anyway. And they wouldn't be able to get back there. You've got a local wife. Why would you go anywhere else? Why would you go back to a world that's gone to pot? Okay? You're not going to do it. You're going to stay put. Best example of this, right? Second World War. German soldiers from the Second World War. Um, they're in a they're in a POW camp and they're being taunted by the guards in Bridgend that we're bombing the hell out of Dresden and Berlin and all the rest of it. Um, and they, they're given a choice. You can either go back home to Germany or you can stay working on the <laughs> land. And, and they're thinking, and, and there's some nice women around here. I would stay. I'm not going to go back to Germany. And this is exactly what was going through those serving here in the Roman period. They did not leave. So Roman civilization did not. The, the They say that the legions left for Rome. No, they didn't. There was no Rome for them to go back to. So you're going to stay. And we see that metaphor in the Second World War. And with the Italians as well. That's why we've got so many Italian yeah. ice cream parlours. What about Roman Methodists? Because they were so posh on people doing that thing where you used to be in the the, the the Romans were... <coughs> were um, S-H-I-T <coughs> on keeping records, right? Massively. But at the end of the <coughs> Roman world, <coughs> wherever those records were being kept, they were being lost. At the beginning of the Roman world in Britain, we know every single governor, and I've got it in my own book, it's listed, right? We know every single <laughs> Roman governor. Um, we, we know, we, we've even got um, <coughs> in the early material that's coming out from Hadrian's Wall and London, We've even got we've even got land deeds, right? There was a they found a land deed a few years ago, and they found more since. Certain person bought this from X, Y, and Z. I own this, and I passed it on to somebody else, right? All that survives. But as things fall apart, these materials that they're using to keep records get become more important for making fires with them. So so when did so we left. We lost the basically we lost the army. We lost the No, we lost we military. lost no no we lost the principle of the army yeah, but not the, the army principle. itself. So so those those stayed behind. Those stayed behind. They're not as soldiers. Yeah, they they, they stayed behind to defend what they've got. That's what a soldier does. Yeah, yeah. but Arthur was doing leading. Bingo, bingo, I'm glad you've mentioned it. What's that? Arthur. Arthur that's what Arthur was doing, leading them. <coughs> Or all the Arthurs. Yeah. Um, so another another plan, aerial view now. Um, again, down here you can see more of these. But let's move on. Um, and lots, lot the beautiful aerial uh, uh, views of uh, some of these. Um, there it is. That's its Welsh name, Caerhyn. Caerhyn. So what what you've got here, you've seen in the aerial views. That that's the granary over there. So those of you who are going on my Colchester trip, you'll need to know some of this stuff and the Hadrian's Wall trip. That there, it probably had a, a garrison. These had, th these buildings here are the barracks. There was probably about 80 men in each. Um, there, there was um, the HQ, um, this, this was the HQ in the middle, and that was the Commandant's house with Bath House and where his family lived and so on. Probably a, there was probably a basement in here to keep the, um, um, the the military chest. If these each of these had eighty people, and that's a granary, so uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. That's a thousand, about. 
but it was probably never ever garrisoned with a thousand. Um, what would happen is at the end here, we're presuming that these up here are, are barracks. If they're not, it changes the figure. This here uh, is the centurion's um, house. Well, building within the barrack block. Okay, that's where the centurion lived. Okay, um, and then there would be uh, these would be divided in rooms for um, eight soldiers each. And opposite, there'd be a room where they'd put all their bits and pieces in. That's technical. That's technically what what would have happened. Um, and it's it's saying it's saying I probably can't read this. It's saying again, lots of these sites. 60, 1650. People are starting to muck around with the site. Okay. And when they stand to muck around with the site, lots of the details going to be lost. But they found legionary stamps associated um, with the 20th Valia Vitrix Legion. So it was probably built by Roman legionaries and then housed Roman auxiliaries. This is another one. Um, this was probably the 20th Legion as well. An X is missing. So we get an idea what's going on there. It's early, but here we go. Um, it sort of goes on to give you an idea. You've got these clay banks and you've got these ditches all the way around. Um, and you've got mainly foot soldiers there, but probably sometimes some cavalry. I'm going to move on again. Um, and it sort of discusses there um, about the fort and it's mentioned in the um, Antonine itinerary. Lots of these forts, though, actually have um, stones associated with them carved stones um with numbers and all sorts on them so uh, near kaya there's a there's a there's a stone associated with um emperor hadrian hadrian was made a pontificus maximus emperor um following his accession on the 11th of august 11 uh, in the year 117 ad power was renewed um on the 10th of december meaning that i'm going to stay as emperor and on that date annually thereafter uh, the stone, um, uh, you know, the, the, they would find, they would found stones dedicated to the Roman Emperor. This is what this stone was about. Another stone, a dedicated Emperor Hadrian, um, dated to 128. And another stone dating again um, to um, Trajanus. Um, no, we, yeah, it would, would be Trajanus in 108. And then it was restored in 118, associated with Hadrian. Can I just tell you a little bit of a story, right? And I'm glad, I'm glad Michelle's not in the room. Um, when when I was um, when when I was um, when I was engaged to a woman who undoubtedly lived in Cumbria, um, we, we used to go around different archaeological sites. And one day, um, we we had the, we had our son in a little pushchair, right? Um, so we went to this site in Cal Carlisle called Old Carlisle, as a Roman fort. And and uh, I was saying, oh wow, you know, I'm trying to I'm looking at looking at the wall and stuff. And she said. She said, Carl, come over here. I found a Roman a piece of um, tile, she said, with lettering on it. And I said, no, you haven't. She said, I have, honestly. I thought she wanted me to go over and give her a kiss or something. I said, no, I'm looking at this. And she said, no, I've had, it's not a bit of tile. It's a piece of stone with Roman lettering in it, right? I said, you're joking. And she said, no, I'm not. I ran over. Yeah, it was a stone which had been used to build the wall right, with Roman lettering on it, right? Um, so um, a really nice piece of stone, and it was the oh, it was the first piece of carved stone found at our old Carlisle in about 150 years, right? And you never married her. I, I, I should have married her because the Sorry, relationship yeah. went skew if right? She kept the stone, and I never ever saw it again, and she won't give it yeah. to a museum, and it's 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 the quite an, a major piece of Roman uh, carving. Let's move on. Um, I, went, I went off in a little bit of a thing there. But there you go. The idea of the bank. And what we'll do, we'll take a break after this. We'll have a cup of tea. So we've got the bank there. Um, there's Kyrene Church. And look at that. It's a really long church. And you see those massive blocks there? They were probably, um, they probably utilised stone from the HQ. All this building used stone from, it's smack bang in the middle of the Roman site, basically. It's on the edge or whatever. But the, the, the big stones would have come from the Roman HQ. Be, and the other thing as well is, right, why build a village over there when you've got a nice Roman fort here, right? Let's use the material. Let's plonk a church into it. Most poor Chester Roman fort, which is one of the best preserved Roman forts in the country, has a, has a bloody church there, right? It's there. Um, Car Cardiff, Cardiff Fort, for example. Um, 
that that is that is why we've got Cardiff there today because there's a fort there and people have built their medieval town around it. That's why. That's why the, the Normans then captured it and then built and and, and all, they demolished bits of the wall, right? And they built this huge mound in the middle. Underneath all that, there's so much stuff which is Roman that I would love to pull it down because it's Norman, right? Let's just get to the Roman stuff. In fact, let's demolish Carnarvon and all the English castles and we'll have a nicer landscape. The fact of the matter is all these use earlier materials. So the fort's in here as bad as the earlier archaeologists were told that they'd been equipped with Roman hands. Yeah, but those archaeologists were English. I'm, I'm Welsh and I want the, the English castles demolished. Um... You should agree with me there, Cathy. You you agreed with the bombing on the track when Queen Charles was nearly killed in the inauguration in Carnarvon. No, she didn't at all. I'm putting words in her mouth. Charles was my eldest on my left at the time. He was born. Funny, what's happening? She caused it. She, she was there. She was in my being Glindur. She's a secret agent. Have you got milk for your tea? Um, we could always do with some more. Right, okay, I'll go and get it. I bought it yesterday and I'm not likely to use it. Oh, you're a beast! We were just having a tea break! It's kind of heat change, so obviously that's built uh, from the material. Um, and you've got an, that stone there shouldn't be there either. Look at that. Where's that stone? It's a nice bit of dressed stone. It's unusual. So, um, And there you go, nice long building. Bit more of the bank at Kairahin. And another beautiful view, and you can nice see it in silhouette there. And obviously, all those ridge and furrow systems was because people used used the fort as their sort of epicenter in the medieval period. This this is where our very early um, peoples of Wales were living in that period. Just pull it, yank it. Good. There you go. You can share out amongst. Do I get a big sloppy kiss? <laughs> These Brexit loving plotters. Eh? We're well, Brexit loving plotters. Yeah, he, his his oh. missus is French, right? And yeah. he had to marry his missus so she, she could stay in the country. And that's right, isn't it? Oh, no, that is, that, that is, that's that's true. That's the only reason he She's married her. She's going to have to go back to Paris and be a street artist. Oh. I, hey, I'd pay for a night with your missus any time. Um, oh, by the way, have you heard about my life modelling classes that I... Um, oh, I'm a life model now. Oh, £50 a throw I get. I'm too pervy for something like that. <laughs> Do you know, the last time I did life modelling, I had a man in the corner with his... It's nice and warm in here. I had, a, I had a guy with his tongue hanging up. Right, anyway, John, thank you for that, darling. You Michael God love loving swine. Oh, yeah. He's got yeah, into it. Yeah. John, I'll see you soon, darling. All right, yeah. Thanks for the milk. No penalist of the world. Shut up, you tart. I'll see you soon. Bye. Give my love to your missus. I tell you what, this is typical Barry bloke. He's from Hampshire. Right, okay. Amshire. 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 Next, we're going to do Bovium from a new angle, but we're not going to start I there yet. He was French. I thought he was French. John uh, Yeah, he is French, he's right? But, he's, but he's, he's like a dodgy one. Right, we're going to take a break now. Break. <laughs> I, I'm, going to, I'm going to become a male stripper. Right, light. Yeah, there was this guy, right? In, in the last, there was this guy in the last life modelling, right? He was, he was, he was continually looking at me, going. Well, he's got two, two. You know. I can't draw you without it. Very long. <laughs> what? Yeah, it was all hanging out. I was draped over the chair. And, and basically, well, one of my friends was in the room as well. Yeah, I know, I know. <laughs> but I didn't know if he had like grapes and frills. You know what I mean? It's, no, if, if, you, if you've got it, flaunt it. They're used to do that. They used right. to Okay, put the kettle on. Somebody needs to put water in the kettle. Oh, oh well. Look, we're getting completely confused. Are you well, that door be no, I'm just standing up for that. Do you want a wee? standing, no. Yes. 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 Well, yeah, it should be open. Open the door. You don't need a key. What I'm going to do. Where's the kettle? Mine's the pint mug and I'd like a deep spoonful of coffee, please. 
Oh, don't have to come here, it's horrible. Mm. Oh, sorry, I'll make a bit of room with oh, that. Bad. <laughs> oh, yeah, by the way, um, if you can draw oh, some of your marijuana, she's in the Is there? No, no, you use the uh, bottles of water. Where is they? There's four bottles right there behind you. Is that easy? Right in front of you. Yeah. He, he's, he, he, oh, he does a full there. range of marijuana, he does. Is that the way you got that from? Oh, I mean, what's mm. the one? Ah. Uh, uh, yeah, he's, he, yeah, he's meant to be suppressed at this minute. Who said you could read my bloody book? Oh, okay. I'm holding this. <laughs> Where is he? Uh, I guess. I don't think get any room anywhere. Can that big thing go on the floor or something? Oh, yeah. I mean, I thought it's only... I thought it was only five minutes. Yeah, that's what I mean. Yeah, but it might be stagnant. <laughs> Yeah. 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 Yeah.
Churchill's mother. What about Winston Churchill's mother? I never touched her. I did. Ah, that explains a lot. But these biscuits, right? Yeah. These biscuits are nice. What I'm going to do? I'm going to clean this. Excuse me, what? What's your name again? Oh, Keith. The route along the plan, the square, swabber swabber jusque vous. Le pont d'Avignon. Oh! Parlez-vous français? Ned! Ned! I think. <laughs> Therefore, I am. Well, you know, when, right. when Kathy was living in North Wales, right? They used to use mud for coffee, right? She was so poor, right? In fact, they used to drink out of the bottoms of horses' hooves. Oh, luxury. luxury. I'm having tea. I don't have sugar with it. Yeah. What well, was sugar? Dandruff? Yeah. Green beans. Green beans? You had spit. You were lucky you have spit. You are lucky you have spit, you lucky, lucky bastard. You lucky bastard. Oh. Things like black energy sport. Yeah, well, yeah. Naughty, naughty boy! No. I didn't like the flag act. Oh, Todd Bob Seisneck. Who's got the whiskey to put in the coffee? My, 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 my mummy used to run around naked. My mum used to run around the house naked, right? Yeah, but was she trying to? Well, we haven't got a spoon. Yeah, but she gets paid. What's bad, right? My, my mother-in-law, right, the other, the other month, right? I didn't, I didn't know she had a key to the house, so I just come out the bath, wandered down the top like of the stairs, and, and she opened the door and she know? looked up, um, and She's she said, "No, oh, she said hi, and she went to the kitchen." Which is that cold? It's not. I, but this is even better. Exactly. Um, and then Michelle's dad, right? He, thank you, darling. Michelle's dad, he, he knocked, he knocked the door this one day, right? And now uh, he, 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 his button went. And and when he opened the door, his trousers and it, and his and his pants come down all the way down to his shoes. And he looked at me and he says and he says hi. He says, oh, don't worry about it. this. Happens all the time. Right. Would you like a cup of tea? Yeah, this is a bit cold. Angus, um, I've made one for you. Yeah. Yeah. No, we haven't. That went in your cup. 
Oh, can I have a bit of the paper over there and I'll, I'll just um, put all the biscuits in here then? Hang on. Right. The no, I'm going to put them in a clean tin. Jack, That's not clean now, is Sorry? it? Mate? I'm going to gonna clean it out now. Oh, I'll take a couple of biscuits before you do. Like that. I've even spat in this. I know exactly. what sugar is. Well, yesterday. Oh, yeah. I'll tell, what, I, I tell you what. I'll tell you what, right. I'm going to ban the Bridget class from their, from their sexual <laughs> innuendos. <laughs> by, by the way, um, me, and, me and that North Korean bloke have made the decision the classes will now be taking place in that room. Oh, it's nice, that one. Yeah, but uh, George don't like it, though, does he? Oh, why? He, 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 oh, I don't like being caramel, upstairs. And Jarvis is like, it's much easier, do you know what I mean? But why didn't he like being upstairs? He's quite happy yesterday. Because, oh, because he's Jewish. He's no, he's not Jewish. He's not from Canada. Oh, George, didn't you say George didn't like being upstairs? Oh, George is a big old girl. Oh, but listen. Go, Adam. Hi, Adam. Hi, Adam. Hi, Adam. She called you a lamb. <laughs> I, yeah, I call anyone that's sweet a lamb. You call me a beast. <laughs> oh, sorry. Beef de bold over. Little lamb over Oh, they need you when you're not doing. They see a kid cooking. What's that, Cohen? Hey, hey, and that's, that's, that's Michelle's special that's fruit right. sugar when she comes to the Barry class, which is all the time, isn't it? <laughs> mm, no. She doesn't come to the Barry class. She does. She comes to. She comes along with the common people, the plebs, oh. the detritus of society. <laughs> she only comes. She's got to keep an eye on him. Yeah, I'd have to keep. Oh, an eye of course she does. Yeah. <laughs> of course she does. I'd have to if I was married to him. <laughs> Don't put your bloody book there. It's a dirty job, but <laughs> someone's got to do it. <laughs> yeah. Actually, do you know he's talking about um, like MBEs and everything and OBEs? Yeah. Michelle sure needs one. Yeah, she is. <laughs> Do you know if I was knighted, I wouldn't remember anyone. Um, <laughs> right. One boiled egg. Come by, my lord. Come by, come by, my lord. Come by, come by, my lord. Come by. How are your feet doing yeah, cold? Yeah. Do you want a chef? Do you want to share some of my nuts? Have you seen my penis? No, 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 no. no, no. I'm allergic. I will. What have you? Have you left? Do you want a penny or a pillow? No, I used to love peanuts. Took me till about four pillow? years ago. Because I'm a fat. Not a pillow, Anne. A pillow. And you old bat. Do I have a pillow? Oh, no. You said that one. Mm -hmm. yeah. 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 Ye
Day today. Oh, yeah, is it? Saint Dominic. Is Saint Dominic? How old are you tomorrow then? Nineteen. Fifteen. Wow. Yeah. 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 Are you? Where are you at the moment? Um, um, working at the minute, but the top of the history yeah. degree yeah. next. Well, this week, end of this week, beginning of next week. Open university. I left school at sixteen. Still working. Then went back for. 
Right, homies, let's get going again. Uh, right, tribe. Right. Do you want to get, I'll, I'll put that in a pin, that plastic thing. Ceremonial acts of all right. Yeah. Oh, you got a pin there? Yeah, yeah. There's a pin next year. Right, darling. Okay, we ready? Go. Looking forward to the third Reich. You put it. I am going to have room from behind you. You, 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 you terrorist. <laughs> you old bat. Right. Okay. Okay, darlings. Let's get on with the next bit. There's nothing wrong with a bit. Right. We're going to be looking next at a place known as Bovium, which is that? Oh. Uh, which, is, which is at Tilston in Cheshire. Oh, right. Bovium means the market town. The only classical reference which records the name of the small Romano-British settlement at Tilston is the Antonine itinerary dating to the 100s. In the middle of the longest British route, uh, mentioned in the Antonine itinerary. 
The Roman name bovium appears to stem from the Latin word boos or bovis, oxen, meaning oxen or cattle, and related to the word borium, cattle market, possibly in it being a contraction of the same. This may be a useful indication of the settlement's primary source of income during Roman British times, the town possibly being the principal centre of trade for livestock bred in North Wales. Oh, I've got the wrong yeah, bovium. Yeah, yeah. I should no, have done. I should have done the Cowbridge yeah, one. Yeah. Well, nobody actually said that was there to wind you all up. And it's, didn't anyone actually spot the fact that that was not even anything about the military? Yeah, I did. Yeah, but nobody said anything. Did they? Good, I'm glad you did. Right, bovium. Yeah, but didn't they need, they needed cattle as well for food? Didn't they? Yes, they did. So bovium. So I did heard of the other one, so Go for I, it. I was thinking, you know, is it just just a term for cattle market? Yeah, the general term. Yeah, it might it be could be. Yeah. It could be. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah, they yeah. are so, bovine. Anyway, let 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 Ang Angus talk. So where is our bovium then? Um, the den. No. <laughs> where is it? You just done it. <laughs> It is Cowbridge. So what 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 can what can we know about Bovium and where it is? Angus, we discussed this one. <laughs> the road that goes through the road that goes through Cowbridge, the A forty eight. Yeah. Now, it's been popularly known and thought that the A48 is the exact alignment of the original Roman road. In fact, that is not true in one way, shape or form. Because, ish, because the actual Roman road surface um, is within that grass verge that follows most of the length of the A48 going from Cardiff all the way through past um, Cowbridge and towards Crack Hill and beyond. If you if you notice, the A48 has an absolute massive grass verge alongside it. It's not for agriculture because you can't plough above a thick gravel bed. And over the years, the reason why that sort of that corridor be alongside the A48 is getting wider and wider is because the the roads have moved over time oh. so um, uh, right both sides because oh. the, 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 it's basically the trajectory is moved because what happens to a road because if you got if you got a road surface as traffic is going over it it's di displaced yeah. or it might actually or the road actually might move over here right and it's on this side are you hollow and that inevitably, depending on what the soil conditions are like, the stone conditions, the, mo the road moves either side of it. And, that, and, the, and the reason it's likely that um, the Roman site of Cowbridge um, came before the road. Because Cowbridge has access to the River Thor. And the River Thor uh, would have been... Uh, the gradient would have been different, the alignment would have been different, and so on and so on. There would have been access to Cowbridge by, via water, undoubtedly. Whatever theory you want to go by, um, the Julius Maritimer does go through the heart of Cowbridge. That is the only part of the alignment of the Julius Maritimer that has kept its thing going through the centre of Cowbridge. So that red line there goes smack through um, the Roman fort of Cowbridge. And very interestingly enough, when archaeologists have surveyed this, the North Road um, is the alignment here at the back of um, the Town Hall, which is over here, mm. on the back of Waitrose, which is over here, um, and the church going through here. Um, this this is, that is the... the archaeology thing down at the minute, that you were talking about? No, the that was over here where they were yeah, working. The, that's right, on the outskirts, yeah, yeah on the outskirts. Um, all that stuff has now been demolished. It's all gone. All those medieval buildings on that side have all been demolished. Yeah. Um, oh, and, and they weren't they weren't happy when um, somebody put um, somebody put something on Facebook that said, "Oh, human remains have been found there." Uh, and um, and the guy contacted me. Do you know this person um, who put this stuff about human remains on there? Because I don't think it's appropriate being in a public medium that they were building 
um, an old people's home over there <laughs> when there's <laughs> when there's been bodies found there. And I said, no, I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna advise the person who's put it on to take it off. Just stay it on there. It's archaeology. Oh, that's unacceptable because it's gonna put people off living there. Crap. Oh, yeah, exactly. It's going to underneath a new care home that's going to be. Yeah. 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 Well, I wouldn't. They've taken the bodies away, yeah. They What's that? No. It's bones. It's, it's like. Training, riding, coaches long. Right, a bit of Elvis. Um, so you, you we go. Um, you didn't know I was a twice award-winning actor, yeah. but don't worry about twice it. <laughs> I've got a Brit, I've got a British Academy Award, and I've got um another award from, from a film festival in France. I thought I'd chuck that in there. Right, shh. Right, everybody, look at me. Dalcom line. That there is Landbrunner's Church. Okay. Yeah, there it is. And what does it say about Glanbrunnock's Church? It says as follows. An aerial view of Glanbrunnock's Church within the field across the lane from the church as lie the ploughed out bank of a Roman enclosure. The church itself may well overlie part of the bank. And it is also likely that a medieval village awaits discovery in the surrounding area. A series of interesting medieval buildings has recently been excavated within the comparatively large churchyard. Well, well, you always used to say that if you saw a church in the middle of nowhere, it was a village. deserted medieval village. Exactly. Um, do you see that there? Yeah. That there? Here, or actually on the even better on the back of the book where it's colour. But if you look here, um, that is um, that that is going towards Cowbridge. That's going towards Cow Cardiff, and you can see a li alignment of the road that goes straight yeah. through. Yeah. So that's Cowbridge there. If you go towards this edge at the top, a place that runs down to it, you have to go in the coffin site. Oh, it's lovely, isn't it? It's great. And then you should see the thing out in there. All the it's the nice, isn't it? Um, I, 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 I took a woman on a romantic walk down there. But, but um, <laughs> we got disturbed in the graveyard. <laughs> My neighbour's name is on a, on a stone. Oh, we're, probably rest, we're probably resting up against it. No, it's halfway up the wall. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. hey, um, I, I'll, sh I'll show you. Um, I'll, sh I'll show you some stuff from Cambridge. Right, they excavated that under the Yorkshire Building Society building, which is now the Swansea Bank building. They found a shop, and and a platform at the back was used for industrial purposes. Yeah, so you've got that. That's in there. That that was found in 1977. Right, um, that's 75 High Street. And also, I, I've actually got this on one of the slides, but I'll show you this anyway. That's the Arthur John car park, where there's a Roman building still under there. It's there underneath the car park still. It's preserved. It's underneath the car park. Roman military bath block with Roman military burials, with Roman military tiles of the Second Augusta Legion. And people still, still don't think it's Bovium. Um, with a Roman military wall around the outside, and there's still archaeologists who say it's not a military base. Isn't it a shame they make it into a car park and not just a park? Well, at least it's yeah. 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 What yeah. Time yeah. Is the temple. What time is the remains under the building? Yeah, so huh? the only three car parks. That was all. That would have been all ripped yeah. out because they um, had to put the vault yeah. in there. So what do they do with all the stones? Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, this is the thing. This is always the question. Where does it all go? Somewhere on the planet of the Earth, there's a big pile of medieval and Roman masonry. Find these piles and you're going through them again. Exactly. They must have left it all in there. Well, they would have, yeah. Exactly. Oh, this is the one thing. Do you know where the monks used to keep their bathing pools when the river went upside down? And you still see it on the The monk's bathing pool? I think I, I think I know where you're talking about, but we don't we don't um, we won't talk about that now because it's the wrong view. That there is the is the is the Roman lion found in Hop Yard Meadow. Oh, right, you lot! It's not a Bridgen class. Now shut up. Are you recording this? Oh yeah, I am. <laughs> I, 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 I have to edit that. But. 
glasses. And, and all the bits you talk about don't singing. just tell Michelle. <laughs> oh, Christ, yeah. I thought it was when the Wellham, the Wellhams was, the back of, they call it the Wellhams Yard or something. No, it's Arthur John. Uh, no, Arthur John. No, that was found a Hop Yard yeah. Meadow at the other end of Cowbridge. Right, oh. can you, can you all get some focus and decorum? It's What's like, that, the lion? oh, that lion? we'll do the lion in a minute. Look, I tell you what, most archaeological lecturers are like me, so don't worry about it. And in fact, in fact, all the archaeological lecturers I've ever come across are undoubtedly uh, usually late, and they're all rude, and they tell terrible jokes, and they all swear. There's an archaeologist, right, he uses the F word through the entire of his lecture, so you, you're lucky. Oh, but Alice If I was sleeping with her, uh, right? She's wicked and horrible. She's a, she's a, oh, oh, and Bethany Hughes, what a babe with her black hair. Oh, what a bit of strumpet she is. Oh Christ! Um, hey, get that job done next year. I will. What? Well, Bethany being a strumpet. Yeah, I'll do. Right, the town of Cowbridge lies on the line of the Roman road between Cardiff and Neath, Nedham. Um, and the town has produced material from the late um, noughties um, and the bathhouse incorporated in stamped tiles of, of the Second Augusta Legion, uh, proving that it was not built by the Roman military. <laughs> and I put that in there. Its origins may therefore be military. Of course it's bloody military. Uh, the bathhouse was, um, was probably destroyed in about, by about 120 as the Roman military moved off. It's got large ditches and some of those... Some of those ditches are found behind the Midland Bank, which is probably the only bank that's going to be left in the whole area soon, um, with HSBC in Cowbridge. Um, it, if, therefore, uh, if there is a military origin, for God's sake, um, then obviously the, thaw, the fort stood by the, by the River Thor um, and to have predated the road whose line it would have cut. So there you go. So the fort came before the road. But don't make these things up. I'm and a god. Was there before the road. I, the, the thaw no, they there. would have come in. Yeah. 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 Um, you can't get to somewhere without having a, a route. If, <laughs> not if, you, if you're using the river network, you, would, you could have got there quite easily. Well, That's the point. Are you saying that? Yes. Well, they could use a punt on it, couldn't they? Yes. I don't believe yeah, that. Should have been a shot. Oh, you lot are really right. Elephants. Did anyone get the first rule? Next slide. Right? Next slide. Here, here. I agree with People you. of Lantern Major, shut your gobs. <laughs> and the ones in, in one in Bridgend, right? Your gobs are even bigger, otherwise they're gonna be filled. Now stop it. With cement. Um this is this is um, this is an old uh, this is um, a map from um the um nineteen hundreds. And you can you obviously the the plan itself, the nice plan of Cowbridge keeps continuing and this this wall is probably a roman alignment as you go out towards Bridgend, and this this here is also a roman alignment and the north wall is probably a roman alignment as well um that would be the military base um lots have been written about it um and as you can see there there it is the red dot do 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 um this is a quite an old map because this is from the 19 um late 1940s but um since then we've obviously updated this quite quite a lot and if you go over towards the where where the word avento flow is that's that's the roman name for the um river ueni or if they got it wrong the river um ogmore and if you go all the way a bit further up um oh, you've got you've I got thought it was uh, Wenny, as in white one, but it could be named that's racist after the roman name oh. right okay um over years, poor call, and a little bit further on is Kenfig. Okay, and obviously, um, and then you've got Pyle up here as well, where it, where it turns. So you've got Kenfig and Pyle, and that's where the road turns up. Some believe that the road actually went to Kenfig itself. Oh, the black, black stones sticking out. Um, oh. No, those are standing stones. Oh, really? Those are standing stones, yeah. yeah. Put the guy, put the gear on there in Newport. Or I t right, are you actually listening to anything I said? I said this was made in the late 1940s and lots of what we know hasn't been added on it. It's just, an, it's just to give you an idea. Yeah. Right. What did he stop? Oh, uh, acne. Just asked that. What did he stop? <laughs> it's a 
The spots are individual fines. Anyway, oh, there, there, there you go. There you go. There's the alignment. And this is going over St. Hilary. Um, and I always remember I forced my granddad to drive his car over St. Hilary and it bugged up his gearbox because he had an old car back then. Um, my granddad was called Knob End. <laughs> He couldn't even go up the crack hill. No, what, what he, my granddad was called Noah. Was that Noah? We called him Nob, Nog, and friends called him Nob End. That's my granddad. Uh, what, how, uh, what was his name really? Noah. Oh, Noah. And we called him Nog oh. and Nogger. Oh, I like Noggy the Nog. Noggy the Nog. And we called him Nog. That, that there, that there is the, is the Roman bath house of wonderful um, Cowbridge itself. Okay. And this is the military bathhouse, and obviously it demolished in the 100s. Arthur this is underneath Arthur John's car park. You can see over here, the level, so they've gone down um, a metre and a half, so this is well protected under all the mud. Um, and and they, there you go. Um, there, and th this, is, this is the other car park, but over here, this is where Arthur John's is, and it's directly underneath that, and that is where that diverted a uh, part of the um that's that's part of the diversion of the river thaw there this bit and there's another bit of the river thaw coming over here there's two bits of water there's one bit of water here and there's one bit of water over here it's all diverted and it's all been altered you can see the muddy little burger spot there yeah that's where ingrid the bergaman went go like that Basically, when 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 the Declares founded um, Cowbridge um, in 1254, they, they they set out it it was it was given borough status. So so it, the town was planned. It was it was a town walled area, but it didn't have a castle associated with it. And it had basically you'd have a small house, uh, with a lane alongside it, with another small house, and you'd have a long strip garden, and the the well and the toy, the privy would be at the back, and usually at the front would be a shop. And behind would be workshops and accommodation. And in Cowbridge, the reason why people, the reason why there was over 20 pubs in, in Cowbridge, probably 100, um, is because everybody sold their ale out of their front room. Mm. The difference between, between, difference between a pub and a tavern is you stay in a tavern, you don't stay in a pub, and anyone can sell alcohol. Mm. If, you, if you come here on Tuesday morning in my Barry class, everyone gets alcohol. Yeah. Um, that 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 is the lion cowbridge that oh the, 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 the cowbridge lion yeah basically that that's formed out of um a, like like a bit of a bath stone yeah hop yard meadow yeah oh, it does look better in the book them from a different angle they've gone from a different angle doesn't yeah. look like a lion at all yeah. Yeah, they've gone well, from a different angle different angle lamy angle you can see that piece by its back leg it's a different it's the same lion oh right right yeah right kathy you get over there and show her up against it go on that's racist as well Okay, if but basically, if you take the edge of that sort of chart on the wall on the left, and you go basically a little bit further over to the end of that other piece, that's it's not it's in the middle where it says no swearing on the beach. Yeah. That's the length of the lion, and they thought there was actually four, and it was in an area which is um, uh, if anyone knows Cowbridge, it's never east treaded wheat in the west end, at the west end side of Cowbridge along West Street, Westgate Street. Uh, you've got. Um, to go in you've got the police station which i know well 
Um, and then you've got Hop Yard Meadow. Yeah, that's right. Turn it around to a road. On the left there is Hop Yard Meadow. They found that, a lot of other Roman evidence, not any buildings. And they believe that was part of the top of a mausoleum. There would have been four of them. Wow. Right? And the lo Romans loved having lions or ornating their tombs. That is in the National Museum of Wales, yeah. A li little bit of information, you know, which I know you can all read. No Look, let's go back to the original rule. Shut up, and only me and Angus are allowed to talk. Um, no, not sure. Yeah, but Angus. 1981. Um, be 1981, the the bath uh, the bathhouse was found. 1977, the, the shop front was found. Little, little bits of wall were found as well. The banks and ditches and all the rest of it. So um, it's obviously it's actually found um, within the boundary of the northern limit. You're not going to be able to do that. It's just I'm, I'm reading from this. And the, the structure appears um, to have been in use from the late from the er, late noughties into the early uh, 100s. Um, and there's evidence of corn drying kilns, very similar to the wonderful corn drying kilns found um, a little north of Lanswick Major a few months ago, which were uh, bulldozed and ploughed and nobody's meant to know about. I have all, all sorts of threats with um, issuing that information, but I don't care anymore. Um, so anyway, so they, they date from the, about the late 200s and the 300s, and then you've got the stamps of the Second Augusta Legion, a ballista bolt being found there. Um, and with all this evidence, Obviously, it is a site of Bovium, but, um, uh, but our friend, Angus, where did you where did you think it was? Oh, Bovium. Yeah, go, give it to me. Um, say, Bovium. say what you said. Bovium. You said Bridgend. Actually, some people believe that a Bovium could in fact be at Bridgend. It could also be at UNE, underneath the UNE Priory. However. <laughs> This is all the military evidence from Cowbridge. Really? Oh, cool. Um, I didn't know that. Obviously, it went down the, the, uh, the Turberville line and picked in Turbervilles and all this, but, but I didn't know that. But anyway, now you've thrown me, right? But a lot, because what it is, the, the alignment of the road actually kinks off through Ueni and goes across the uh, Ueni River. And then goes all the way up to um, through Glanweni, uh, Glanueni, and then it goes all the way back through alongside Merthyr Mower, and then it goes all the way through to the Red Hill Roundabout, where I've been in the bushes with Anne, and we found some of the Roman road in there. And then it keeps going all the way then through to Porth Colway. Do you remember going in the bushes with me there? Well, remember that? I was with you, I think. Yeah, well, nothing happened then. Woman. Was it yeah. just a different woman? Oh, Road, yep. then swap the fourth farm on the left. Well, he's the one that Penny wrote to me that land and buy and down into you when he prior area. Yeah. Penny did. That area. Can I can I just make a comment? Um right. Can I make a comment, right? Can I make a comment, right? I can also mention there's a lunatic asylum in asylum in Merthamar, right, yeah. Um but I don't think any of that's no, got any relevance. Was there a Kevnar? No, there was a proper lunatic no, asylum there. Yeah. <laughs> no, 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 honestly, they were proper lunatic asylum. You know what that is? There, it's funny there isn't any evidence. Yeah, right, hang on. It's just me. Oh. It's me and Ellen. I'm talking. <laughs> Ellen's got the talk stone, okay? Or should we give her the talk bone? Yeah, yeah what, it, what it is in Barry, we've got the talk bone. A bit of bit of femur. And we, we anyone who... T yeah, right. And it's disease. This is disease bone as well. Oh, Extensive... Um, <laughs> a, a, a bovinic disease. Anyway, what, 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 in, in, as you go over the, the, the dipping bridge, as you, and, and then you've got a little sign on the road that says Lanner Care Home. Well, that was demolished in, in 2006. Back there, there's a, there's a red brick building, and over, uh, alongside it, more or less, is a Georgian building with a little bit of curved flat arch. That was where the lunatic asylum was. It's there. Ah. Uh, and I tell you what, I tell you what, me and Ellen have got one date that we've got to do in pen clean, right? And now we've got another date. Whoa. And whatever you do, don't tell Michelle. You haven't got the guy's helmet, have you? <laughs> You've got bloody chainmail associated with it. six miles from me my friend found it and we must have seen it. Oh. It's not a blow-up rubber doll, is it? 
Oh, oh. by the way, I know this is completely digressing. On the trip to Hadrian's Wall, right? Um, Roger, what Roger's going to do one night, he's going to he's going to get the keys for the van, right? And we're going to have two pop up blow up the dolls in the van. So when Chris comes out in the morning, he's going to freak. <laughs> anyway, moving on. This has all got relevance. Okay. <laughs> this is Le this is Lucarium, and does anyone know where Lucarium is? No. Lacha. The wonderful excavations at Lacha. Lacha. The excavations at Lacha. And there you go. That's what you're looking at. There you go. They found these really deep set foundations for granaries. It was a really important location for the Romans at Lucca. The beams were so big. If that skinny wretch lied in the trench, right, the beams were wider than him. Okay? <laughs> I'm trying to convince him to join as well. Right, anyway, so... Is that Swansea? Near Swansea. So if you hand that around, uh, boys and girls, right? Yeah, the Lucca Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <coughs> you're you're going to miss out. You're going to the Open University, right? You're going to miss out on all these weird lecturers like me. Yeah, I study from him. Yeah, I know, no, but you, at least you get me. And, and you still yeah. need to do like. Oi, shut up! Sure. I'm talking now! You haven't got the bone. <laughs> right, we're going to do this now. <laughs> we're going to do it. I tell you what, right. Okay, here, here we go. What we're going to do, we're going to we're going to have the talk pin. Oh, actually, what we could do is have a, we've got a bit of a boat there off a shipwrecked boat. This is. This, right, from now on, the rule is, if you're going to talk, you've got to hold the talk Yankee screw, <laughs> which was made in 19, 1939, used by the Americans for light railways along our coast. Oh, so oh. whoever wants to talk has to hold that. Wow. Now, we are now over to Lucha, right? Lucarium, which is near Swansea. I'm going to hold this. Oh. It's my cheat, my, my Let me show you Adam. She's armed and dangerous. <laughs> oh, yeah, he found it. It's the big time. Folks! Is Second evil. World War, is it? Where did you find that? I made it. Oh, you made it. Oh, she made it. Oh, it's important. Oh, it is. Yes, Second World War. Said. Oi, everybody! Sorry, oh, gosh. You made the cheese nice. And, you know, Romans are important. Oh, Shut up! I just start speaking German. I'm going to call you all Booter in a minute if you don't watch it. Booter! Everybody, concentrate on me because we were only on slide 34. Right? Two out, two out a bit hours to go and we got to slip in chips. Right? Lacha! There's Lacha! There! Lacha! Lacha! The river Lacha! Yes. Oh, for... Do you know what, right? I've just realised, right? I've got no control over you, lot, right? It's like, it's like teaching a load of faggots in brains beer. Right. Here, uh, here, right? Where they had the excavation, below this mound here, okay? And there's where Lucha Castle is today. So the Roman fort goes underneath it. Yeah, so in this area was the big excavations that you can see, if I grab that book again, in here, that's where the granaries were. Yeah. Massive granaries. You could lie in there with Michelle and I'd be quite happy. Oh, moving on. Things with Michelle. Yeah, yeah. Well, well, at least, at least, at least, at least, at least I, I, I madly lust after her and not anybody else like Glenda. So, there you go. so um... Right, so so there you go. So this, so what they've done in the excavations, um, they've got evidence of uh, remains of a tower. They've 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 got evidence of the the wonderful granaries that they've excavated there. There's two plans of the fort, so it was built twice. This was the point. Lots of Roman forts were built more than once. The Roman fort at Cardiff was built in stone at least four times, if not quite a number of times. So this is the point. You see, you've got a fort. They don't need it for a long time. And they think, oh, we need to use it again. It's a bit like the British government. You get a hospital, 
Um, they build it, they don't use it, and then they realise they want to use it again, but they've got to demolish it again to build another one. Yeah, that's so, true. So that, they, that, that's happening with a hospital in London at this minute. So, um, so I obviously, I've got a lot to look at, but Lucky are an important locality. We're moving a bit further into Wales, over by Lucky here. Yeah. Um, all the way over there. And that is a nice section through a bank. And you can see where the, all the turves have been laid, stacked on top of each other. Ooh. And you can see all the different layers. That's as clear as day. And what would have happened, the way they would have built, is quite is quite simple, right? So if I can have that, that's basically a sod of earth. So you'd cut a sod of earth, right? And you'd do that side up, that side up, that side up, that side up, that side up. And you'd keep alternating it like a checkerboard. And that would give the whole thing strength because some of the roots would take and it would keep going and it would grow through the bank as well. And that's exactly what's happening there. On Time Team once, they, they, they found, it was wonderful, they were doing an excavation and they were perfect checkers. Top and tail, top and tail. All It was like a chessboard thing. Beautiful. And the Romans went through that detail. And the other thing to say, you can't go through that detail if you're being attacked all the time. Oh, that there you can you can get that from the measure. So that's yeah. that that's one meter. Yeah, true. So that is really wide. Yeah. yeah. Some of these can be um, five, six, ten, you know, six, ten meters across. They're huge banks. Okay. And the other thing as well is, hopefully we'll get to it. Each Roman soldier. Um, don't know where it is in that book, but it's in my slides. Each Roman soldier had a stake that they carried around with them, right? So at night. If you if you got fifty men, they have two. Mm, sometimes, but not always, because they, they they would have sometimes cross them. Yeah, but you are right. Yeah, um, you usually at least one, but you are right. You are right. Sometimes two, um, but what would happen uh, at night? They they would stake this in the ground around the perimeter, um, and sometimes dig a little bit of a shallow ditch, and that would protect them overnight. It's their it's their it's their defence. Um, but you know, this is a landscape where you've got soldiers practicing how to fight. You know, you don't put green troops into an area where they're going to be killed and they've got no idea of warfare. That's why there's so many practice camps in Landrid Nord Common. That's why there's so many at Getley Guy. That's why there's so many, for example, um, at Neath. Uh, the ones at Neath are so queer, right? I haven't got an image of it, and I'm really disappointed. Uh, because trying to do the research for this, I've, I've been trying to fit it in and it's taken me about best of eight hours to do and plus. And it's just thinking, well, I, I wish I had a little bit more time because um, at on the common at Neath, you, you get a you get a bit of a bank and a ditch like this and they abandon it. And you get another bit of a bank here that's cock handed and they think, oh, that, that's wrong. We'll do another one. They're practicing troops how to build these things in fields. Well, it's like the, you know, the war. Ah, uh, yeah, but the difference is with the two wars, right? This is one thing you're not told, is that um, at a Pen Clean military camp, um, you know, dozens of troops were being killed because they 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 were using live ammunition, right? And what would happen? And and this is another point: troops that were being trained had to be trained far away from where they lived. Yeah. So they used to train the Lancashire regiment in yeah. Pen Clean. Yeah. And what would happen is that by about 1915. Um, people were hearing their loved ones had died on the front right some people were lucky enough to get their loved ones back in coffins mm -hmm. and the loved ones getting their back in coffins they would say oh they died in flanders mm -hmm. right the reason why they're getting their loved ones back in coffins is because they died in pentley mm -hmm. if you had a loved one back in a coffin in the first world war right mm -hmm. they didn't tell people this is because they died here and it's the same with the yanks it's the same with the canadians if you had a body back in a coffin or uh, we were lucky to bring, get the body back. And that was the problem because they died here. The point I've just made yeah. is that this wasn't, this was in, this was in an area where they weren't using live or whatever, no, right? No, no. And they were training troops that weren't going to be vulnerable. That's why they're being trained here. Right. This is why we find the evidence. So just quick, would it be local? Thing, did it apply to World War II as well? Did you put it or not? Um, I think in World War Two, World War Two was a very different war because you had bombing. Uh, you, you, you know, nobody's going to know how you died in the Second World War. To be honest with you, if you had a coffin back, they could have legitimately died in a bombing raid, and that, that's, you know, so that's different. Anyway, moving on, folks. Go for it. Would the Romans be recruiting locally? 
If you're... This is the point. This is the old thing. You would only recruit troops locally to serve somewhere else. Because if you enlist troops locally, if there's a problem locally, they will side with the locals. Uh -oh. So you have them serving far away from home. Mm -hmm. So you've got, you've got um, again, apologies if this sounds racist, you've got a black guy, black as the ace of spades from, um, um, from Nubia, right? And they're serving over here. People don't even, people think they're bloody aliens, right? They're going to have nothing to do with them. Nobody's going to have anything to do with them. And they're the best troops to have serving on Adrian's Wall because they can keep the peace. Because they've got nobody to turn to. They're not going to go home unless they do their job for the Romans. And that's a way to have a... a you know, for example, people people serving in Cyprus in the uprising in, in the 1950s, right? Yeah. The British soldiers know full well that they're not going to get home unless they do their duty. Do their duty. So um, let's not have mobile phones going off, Angus. You've ruined my life. Pardon? You gotta to be tough. It toughens you up. So the first mention of the Roman fort for the the, the name for the Roman fort at Lucca is in the Antonine itinerary. If you if the Roman name wasn't recorded in the Antonine itinerary or um, the Ravenna um, work, there's no name for it, right? Because the later documents are being lost. Yeah. Oh. Um, no, I didn't say Penclean, I said um, Penali. No, it's Penali. Oh, Penali, yeah. Did I say Penclean? Yeah, you did. I didn't, did I? Yeah. Why didn't anyone correct me? <laughs> yes, Penali. Not Pendine, Penali. I apologise, you do get it. Yeah, it's Penali. Penali, yeah. You should have questioned me on that. I didn't know. You I didn't know. <laughs> Good. I can say what I like then. Okay. You do. I do. <laughs> right, you pay for me to do these classes. Oh, and I forget we've nearly got sixteen people in Landwick Major and it's it's we got enough we, you know, we got enough room in there, yeah. So anyway, um it's again mentioned and the name uh Lacarium. Okay, the name Lacarium and you've got the name Lecca Fluvis, which is the flow of the river Lucca. That's mentioned in the um, in Maybe the work of Ptolemy. Maybe it means river. It's a Latin for river. Oh, that's what he said. Oh. No, you, hey, you haven't got this to talk. Do you know what, right? I've made such a bad job of this Lucca thing. I'm going to carry on. Although a bathhouse discovered in 1851 confirmed the Roman presence in the area, the actual location of the suspected gar garrison uh, was not established until 1969, leading to the 1970s when excavations on the site of the Norman Moat revealed the eastern corner angle of the fort. Investigations of the following year located and confirmed the position and orientation of the north, south and the east rampart. But the west defences lie beneath the railway embankment. That's okay, we'll just remove the railway. Um, traces of an angle tower associated with the fort were uncovered in the 1970s and more excavations occurred underneath the Glamorgan Grant Archaeological Trust because this is one of their reports into the 1970s as well where they found the granary. Six phases of interior buildings were found. Now that's interesting. There's an interesting point to be made here. Um, the interesting point is as follows. It said that every seven years or more, a Roman barrack house had to be rebuilt. A Roman barrack building, because they were milled, built on stone footings, timber structure, um, substructure and superstructure, you had, and timber. So the timber had to be then demolished um, and they would build it again. So six times seven gives you the length of time that the fort was used for. Based on the phases. The, the, ah, yeah, it might be hang on, hang on. I mean, you, you are missing the point. I said it earlier on. These guys have got to keep sharp. Oh, so it's practice. practice. It's practice. They've got to keep sharp. The Roman military, you served in the Roman military and you did job ass things for no reason at all, <laughs> right? Um, and this is the point. It, it, it's. You've got to 
practice and you've got to keep sharp on these things. Yeah, also That's one of the reasons. You've got 500 legionaries standing around. You want them to be doing stuff. Exactly. Yeah. They're not just going to do nothing. So yeah, exactly. Do all things. Exactly. Well, it, well, the, reason, the reason why they're at Punsant is because some Roman soldiers had mining skills. Okay. And the other point as well is monks are based, Christian monks are based on the Roman principle. Monks had a trade. Monks were the miners in the medieval period. The Romans were the miners in the Roman period. The Roman legionaries and the auxiliaries, they all had a trade. They, they, they had road building skills. They had wall building skills. They were potters. They were metalsmiths, candlestick makers, all these things. Tallow makers. They, were, they, they all had skills. Okay? And you had to keep them busy. Um, other information here that we won't go through. If these buildings were inside the fort, which appears likely, this must mean that the defences lay uh, further to the west and therefore enclose an area in excess of um, five acres. So it's a huge fort. Uh, the original timber built fort measured 125 metres, which is fairly long. Um, and it talks about um, the defences, the ditches were uh, one and a half metres deep. Um, and answer to your question, Ellen, width 9.4 metres thick at the base. 10 metres thick at the base. Yes. Um, so all these things are being backfilled and changed. There's loads of information here uh, to give you an idea of what's going on. It's used from the early stages of Roman military occupation in Wales, about the 75, 70 AD, into about 130. And 130... Um, the Romans are moving further in Scotland, so all most garrisons are withdrawn from Wales. If you if you go with with my own book, um, if I can quickly turn to it, um, I've forgotten what's in my own book now, but I'll find it. What's that? Second edition. This is the second edition. It's not in the first, because people who get the first edition are numpties. Um, in in here, I've got I've got a list. You're all numpties, yeah. Yeah, people who got. My daughter's got the first, probably. Yeah, because me and your daughter were close, and I never took advantage of your daughter once. Was she referring to Rachel? When she was older. And you trusted me with your daughter, so that's good. Of course. Um. Anyway, listen to this. In AD, in AD eighty. We believe that there were over 32 Roman forts in Wales. By AD 30, there were 21. By AD 220, there were 11. By 293, they decided to re-garrison Wales. By 330, there were 10 forts. Okay, So you can see that it's less and less and less. And usually, by about 110, it's only um, when we look at Cardiff, um, this this is associated with Cardiff for giving you a comparison with the number of forts. For example, at Cardiff, in in AD in AD eighty, there was a full garrison of troops there, up to a thousand plus individuals, um, or more. By one ten, it only had half a garrison. Between one thirty and around two nine three, there was only about a hundred troops there, just to keep an eye on things. By about three thirty, it was back up to a full unit, so it went back and forth. Uh, but by by the way, um, by the way, there 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 are hundreds of sites mentioned in this book, um, and um, hundreds of sites. You know, you could get over a hundred odd sites mentioned in this book or whatever at the back, um, but there's like only three or four of them actually visible. And I will say that the first edition, the reason why the first edition is so valuable, is because at the back of the book, there's a list of all the individual fine spots of coins. And the locations hidden in the text of coin hoards that are known about, which were not excavated. Uh, when they were published, most of those have been excavated and found by metal detector enthusiasts. Mm -hmm. um, it was That list was not published in the second book because I had threats not to do it. So people buy the first. The reason why the first book is so valuable is because it's used to find these coin hoards. Not yet. Okay. Not yet. Not yet. How many people in Hapagaris? About about five hundred, maybe. Right, moving on. Um, 
next next one we're going to do is is Slanetli, and then we're going to it should say I'm going to have a break. There's Slanetli. Atlanetli is an interesting story. Um, and I don't know why we chucked them in there. Right, but anyway, a couple of those, those are much later Roman helmets from about 100 years AD. That's an that's um, I I think that's a silver example. That's an ex excavated example. That's a genuine one. Um, right, Clenetli, the Clenetli's ancient fort. <laughs> in the 1990s, I used to have constant letters from a guy who wrote this article. Okay. Um, Old maps and plans of the town of Tlanashi show an ancient fortification um, referred to as the Metropolitan Castlefield, Castle Buildings and Pen, Pen Castor. So it's been an ancient camp. Before the construction of the castle buildings at the um, end of the 1800s, the site is outlined as a square or rectangular shape on earthworks and on maps. The earthwork was approximately 50 metres square, so it was a small set of earthworks lying today on the mound that is John Street and was approximately 60 metres um, from the coal vetted river Sledai. Uh, one early plan of the site clearly shows it as a classical play in form site, so it was a really small site or practice camp. So they sent a small group of guys over there, 50 or 100 of them, to practice building a fort. It says into hostile territory. Nonsense. You're not going to send 100 odd guys into hostile territory because they're going to be quickly overrun. It's not going to happen. It don't happen. There's, a, there's another view of that little fort there now. Anyway, on, on arrival at the strategic position, such as a spur or a promontory, the soldiers would dig, dig a V-shape of trench, raising a spoil, um, and with the, with the sharp stakes, they would have a palisade along the top, temporarily, um, if it was. It, they may have practised it a few times. The first detailed references to Netley's Roman site appeared um, in 1888. A local historian by the name of Arthur Mee um, goes on to say, Arthur Mee in 1888, he's a local historian. There you go, he's Arthur Mee, yeah, he is. He's a mate of mine, there he is up there. He's Arthur Mee, he's, he's very good. By 1800 years ago, Clenetli was a Roman outpost. This is what he writes. The legionaries, probably auxiliaries, penetrated ever westwards, arrived at length at Lucha. Length. They, there they founded a settlement and spanning the river with a bridge of wood, pushed on to Clenetli. This was their terminus in South um, King, um Carmarthenshire, Terminus, this is where they ended. We now know that the Romans went all the way to the sea and conquered the whole of Wales. Elsewhere in the in the county, they left traces of their presence in the shape of roads and other works um, and still more enduring monuments to Asquith. But at Lanetli, a square green camp alone remained until the present decade to tell of the place as known to the Romans. So it was marked on maps and all the rest of it. Um... So we, we've done all that. A detailed archaeological survey and investigation of Penicasteth site is, is required to prove conclusively that the site is of Roman origin. Um, and that's what it would have looked like. <laughs> there they are. Do, do you really think that those guys are going to be able to take on uh, um, two or three hundred people with blooming spears and whatever? It's a bit small. It's a bit small, yeah. Yeah, they just do testing what and just Link yeah, and just say, don't hit me. <laughs> Where do they sleep? In the tent. They all cuddled up together, just as I was cuddled up to with Michelle last night. That was good. That was nice. Cuddled up on the sofa first. That's not actually real. That's not real line. That's not. I think you're right there. <laughs> this is half of me. No, that's not drawn by half of me. That's joined by a, an archaeologist a few years later. And th there's a guy there who's 12 years old. What? What happened to his other half? Well, they obviously take the great big jumping over the, over the ditch and then get him piled on stakes. Well, I didn't even know there was a fort in the Trinetti. Trinetti? 
Moving on. Oh, I need something to eat. I can't handle this. This is just too much. No, right. Pennacaster, they even put a blue plaque there, right? But obviously without the evidence. Site of an early fortification, possibly a Roman camp. And there, time for a match. Whoa! Right, so what we're going to do now, right? And that would be silver, wouldn't it? That, that one was found, found in Cumbria, but ones like this, usually silver, solid silver, yeah. A cavalry parade helmet, yes. This is the Crosby Garrett helmet, as they say, similar to the ones that were found um, near Ogmore. And there you go again, side on, to give you an idea of scale. That's bronze, and I think this was silver plated, but you do have them in silver. Uh, it looks, no, it, it looks like it, more like a sphinx, a griffin type animal, yeah. And I think that top piece is silver. But the, but usually these things were all silver. Keith is dead right, and I don't think he's got one in his collection. There's one privately owned, at least. Yes, there is. Uh, we, we, yes, we don't talk about that one. Huh? <laughs> right, okay, okay. Um, this, this image here um, leads us on to finding new forts across Wales. Um, now, one, one, one thing I would say, um, writing this book, obviously lots can be updated. There, there, there were lots of reports of marching camps in the Vale of Morgan. Um, and there's lots of evidence for marching camps in the valleys. There's a place called Penacoica. Uh, it's quite an interesting site and you can see the banks and ditches quite clearly. But the, this, this, this one here, um, as was found very, very recently, and it's the Royal Commission of Ancient Historical Monuments Archive, and it shows a Roman fort. Um, and I just, 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 just a quick list here. This is, um, this is just showing a few um, of the forts, these, these, these types of forts that they got in Wales, and you can get an idea of the scale of some of these forts. The one in David there, uh, Rosva Gareg, is forty-five um, acres in area. Okay, which isn't far off the area that Maiden Castle, the Iron Age fort is. Some of them are much smaller. Here we go. Um, I don't know how they're guesstimating this. How can you have between one and a half and 15 acres in area? Maybe there was a couple of versions. But you can get 10 acre for the, these, these camps. Some were for cavalry. Some were for auxiliaries. Um, you've got one at Blyde Cumbach, which is actually very near Neath. That is um, 63 acres in area about five ten acres bigger than the whole area of maiden castle that's one single marching camp so was that a legion going through there was was it a practice work what was it and there's another one you're trying to brigwelt that is more likely not to be a hill uh, uh, that's likely not to be a marching camp right Tyler birdwell is more likely to be a hill fort simply because it doesn't look like a marching camp Whenever archaeologists are recording these things without archaeological evidence, they see something in a playing card form and they immediately say that that is definitely a marching camp. Um, this isn't very clear, but this is actually, there is Landrid Nodwells. There you go, Landrid Nodwells. And leading to Landrid Nodwells from the south, along this route, it's showing 19 marching camps built alongside the road. Now... I've got to say, right, that there's not much difference between that one and that one. And to be honest with you, um, why would you need to build marching camps along the length as you're building this road? You're not going to. These are practice works. And they, they've got a lot more than 20 marching camps, uh, camps along the route of this road. And look over in this bit, right? You've got one, two, three, four in this area alone. And this is a bad map, but what I'm saying, these marching camps, they're for practice. That's, there's a point to be made here. Has anyone seen it? The point is this. When archaeologists find these things and historians, they say they've got all these marching camps here because they've got to build them because the people around them are such a threat. They've got to continually campaign there and march there and defeat them and all the rest of it. Nonsense. Marching camps are not, not a sign necessarily that there's great conflict. The army's marching from one point to another. A casing point is um, at Port Mahamac, which is just north of Inverness in Scotland, Along all the coastal seaboard, uh, there's a series of Roman mar uh, Roman marching camps, right? Um, they, 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 they've been proven now anyway. 
some of them some of them are doubtful but um, these marching camps th these marching camps as they go along would accommodate about 500 men right um, that wouldn't be big enough to um, defeat a large army if the Caledonian people had them Caledonian people didn't have these things they've got a marching camp they're quite safe to build it from one spot to another and they're advancing because they're able to build the forts in the first place so all these things you've got to be very careful very careful when people go on about um oh there's something else i missed you very careful uh, when you hear about um a massive invasion of wales by the romans and they were fighting all the time over here is a place known as casteth cochlen uh, which is a stone-built fort that the road that the road basically goes alongside um, and that that's a permanent fort which has been extensively excavated there we go landry nod wells um, so it's so if we go um, there there it is there that's the road so these are some shown on the map obviously not all 20 but you can see them along the road along the length of the roman road um, carry on. So, oh, uh, no, 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 no. This is the modern road, and that's the modern road. That's the that's the, that's the road, and and that no angle, but that's not the railway track. That's that, that's the Roman road because it's slightly it's along that alignment. You see. Kathy, good spot though. I won't have a go at you for that. You must have gone there for the water. My mother went convalescent in Yeah, at this rate, you'll be bloody going. <laughs> Were the Romans there at the time? The Pardon? Were the Romans there at the time? Were their mother was there? Oh, yeah. <laughs> right, okay. Um, so there, there, where, there you go. That's Casteth Coughlin, and this is where basically Landred Nod Wells is. There on the, on the screen. Um, and these showing here um, are illustrating the little marching camps by Gethley Gaia. They're not big, are they? In fact, if we go if we go with scale, yeah, that helps. Yeah, yeah. 150 okay. meters there. So that's 50. <laughs> that's 50, and that's 50. So this is about under 50 meters in length. It's not exactly a big fort, is it? And um, and unless unless. And there's only shown one entrance into it, maybe two. It's not that big at all, right? Maybe they were very small. <laughs> They're little miniature Romans, yeah. yes. Yeah, yeah. yeah, they are miniature cool. Romans, yes, yes. <laughs> Shut up, Keith. The pygmy pond cohort. Um, and, and look at this here. You've got... So if you, if, you, if you look at what we're looking at, something like that, and you bang in, you give you an idea of th that road itself is probably a standard... Um, four meters across road it's a it's a dust track so you can get an idea there that's not that very big and that's not very big either so you have to and there's indicated another one over here this is on Gethley Gaia Common loads of the things um, and again you know the point I'm trying to make make up your own mind but for the miniature marching camp there miniature one there and another one up there Again, the, 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 again, this is a genuine bit of uh, Roman road. This is on Gethley Gaia Common, running that way with a faint trace of the ditches either side and slight curve of the agar in the middle. Well, the, the agar itself, if, as the agar curves in to the, uh, upwards, upwards. Yeah, 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 sorry. My fault. Yeah, it, 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 is, it is hard to tell. It is hard to tell. Well, the, the, no, they're, they're upwards. The bank is upwards, yeah. That's the one that we saw earlier on. The little one, that's that's under 50 metres across. It's a little one for little people. And it's basically it's basically saying, um, up on Gatley Gaia Common, um, when visited in 1991, the earthwork appeared as previously described on the Earthman Survey of 1969. Located on a level summit, it measured 24.4 metres by 20 meters by seven meters that is a tiny fort by any imagination um, so this is one of a number that they found that it's even got a clavicle lead, clavicular leading into it which is basically the roman name for a fort, uh, fort entrance so it, it would it would lip inwards so if you attack it frontal you've got that sort of defense 
Um, there's quite a number on Gekki Guy comment as well, and there's a big fort there. But look at that one there again. Um, if you think of Kafili, go somewhere up by there. I was up there yesterday, actually. Um, it's, it's near there. Again, look at that. And there's a little plan of it. So this one's a bit bigger. Uh, this one's over 50, it's about 50 metres width and about 60 centimetres in length. So you've got the entranceway there. We, we named a crow uh, clavica, didn't we? And these are different forms of... Clavicus corvidius maximus. Basically, <laughs> on, on, on a barry walk, we found a crow, and a crow ended up with um, Angus. Oh. And obviously, you know my crow, Blan. She's beautiful. I, she's my ideal woman. I said that to Michelle. She slapped me across the face. She said, I'm going to bed. Um, oh, I love you. It's crow. <laughs> What did you call it? M Michelle, Michelle, what did he, he oh, the crow. Michelle. Oh, the crow. And the crow is called... Bran. 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 I've, I've lost what I'm doing a minute. Um, <laughs> right, so so th if you look at this plan, this is more recent. Okay, this is, a, this is about a 10 years old. So it's starting to plot things on the map a little bit better. And guess oh, what? Um, Cowbridge still isn't on it. Because Cowbridge is over here. That's not Cowbridge. No. Yeah, but there's no green dot. The green dots are false. Mm, the the green, yes. Is it a green dot? The, tri the, the green dot is, is other military. Fortress. 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 It's a downward. It's, 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 it's a downward thing. Fortress. So, for Fortress. question mark. Yeah. Question mark. So, so, they're questioning all these. They're questioning the fact that there's a fort in Kenfig. Questioning the one at Boverton. Uh, Boverton. Uh, bomb, uh, bloody hell. Um, um, Bovium. Um, and they're questioning the one at Glan Wenny, right? Yeah. But we are obviously got this one. That's the new one, the Kaya um, Ganaf, which was discovered a few years ago. And that, that's Cardiff. And obviously, you're going up here, Kefili, um And Penadaran, there was one at um, uh, Merthyr Tidville. Um, and this is on the valley up to Merthyr Tidville. Not one at Barry? I would have thought with a big halt at Barry, that would have been one. We don't talk about that. No, uh, the Gaia. So. Well, that's that's the um, the Gaia is um, I, um, Iron Age. Oh. So, and the other thing as well, quickly about the road, just see if we could get this one the bit done because we've got 50, 25 minutes. We, we're getting there. We could do it. Do you know? Um, Final furlong. For the final countdown. Do, do, do. Right, so you go. If if you note here, uh, you've got um, you've got uh, Cowbridge here, and you've got the possible one at Glanwenny, and you've got possible one at Kenfig. These are all projected, but these bits here, it's showing unknown stretches of road, and stretches of road that are still intact. So the green line, this bit here, going over the River Uenny, so it's showing the road the truck. The tra straight directory is through you, Annie, to be honest with you. They're a bit wobbly about this. And did the road go this way? Or did it go slightly towards the coast of Camping? We don't know. Did it go pile way or this way? We don't know. Mm. Um, it's quite old church, isn't it? Oh, yeah, there's a Camping Castle. Camping Castle, yes. Camping Castle. If you, if you look at this... Um, that's that's basically the way you would build a Roman road, but very few Roman roads were built like that, to be honest. Um, the reason why I'm saying that is every Roman outfit um, had different materials to build with. And if there's no stone, you've got to build it with brushwood, right? Um, and then you might put a gravel surface on it. If there's loads of stone and this rock is so solid, you might just use the solid rock. So there's no actual real format to building a road um, it, there's all different formats but the main thing is um, 23 foot um, which is your equivalent about um, 8 metres wide that's a bloody wide road and lots of Roman roads weren't that wide um, Roman roads like uh, um, the, the uh, Foss Way, um, Ermin Street um, Stain Gate Watlin Street, all these different names um, are names that sort of survive out there today. 
Um, again, moving on. Um, the um, I I got to get this. The the Foss Way itself, running from Exeter all the way to Lincoln, um, that's quite a wide one, but it's a big bank that leads all the way across the country. So it, it cuts the country into two bits. The, at that point, the Roman conquered territory and the the non-Roman territory, and that was up until about forty seven A.D. And then they decided to um, encapsulate the rest of the country. Um, and again, the thing is about looking at Roman maps. The earlier map showed a road to the sea. So this means whoever's done this has based it on a much earlier map that doesn't show the road to the sea. We now know that the Roman road from um, up Moraduna and Carmarthen goes all the way through to Whitland and actually goes all the way to the sea now. Exactly. Exactly, it doesn't. But now we know that that bit of the road that you're describing, Ellen, good eyes goes all the way to the sea um, yeah I'm glad you asked um, again um, th look at this bit of road here this this goes on beyond Carmarthen can you see that you see the bank in there the, the stain in there you, you follow it along going on it's not even there's not even a hedge across it oh look at that it goes straight across the field this follows no modern road simply because it fell out of use and it was um, and it was seen unusable and, and made what right i need to get this across the roman military may have built the roads but they were they were temporary right they were always temporary because the water right this is key the romans um drained the norfolk um fens right they, they built canals everywhere um york itself the the, the second major roman city ever Arkham, was fed by two rivers the Ouse, and the Fos uh, River, okay? So, um, no, the Oos River. The Oos River, yeah, the, what did I say? The Oos and the Fos, yeah. Yeah, that's the one. Yeah, so so those two rivers. Uh, Lincoln had made the rivers, Cardiff had access. It's the rivers. So basically, what it is, right, if you, um, if you put a load of these in a wooden box on the back of a cart down an empty, bumpy road, even with packaging, there'd be nothing left of them by the time we got to Cardiff. So the best way to transport anything is barge. Um, yeah, that's it. Well, well, we were told that the Romans, or well, we were told the Silurians, but probably the Romans. Silurians were in Doctor Who. Drained the di uh, drained the moors, you know. Yeah, they did. They did. Lincoln, they did. They did. They did. End of. They yeah. did. They did. Yeah. The Barlands boat that they excavated was a big boat down there, mm -hmm. right? But th that that was sort of probably in one of the channels. So 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 that's correct. So I wonder. They would have used the reins. Like like they would have used the reins. The reins are very important, exactly. Yes. Yes. Yeah, the reins. Yeah, the, that the reen the reen is a is a right. The, the best use use the word the word reen right because when I go to Scotland, the word dike means a bank. So, uh, um, well, actually, uh, in Barry, it means something completely different. They have got a along the sea wall. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, I don't know how long she's been there. <laughs> right, there's another road, as you can see that, and it suddenly disappears That's off into the distance. Mm -hmm. Okay? And this is all based on the work. I've got a book be behind Kathy, but it's an orange book called, by a book called By the Name of Magaray. He surveyed all these roads, and um, we are finding bits of roads even today. Did they, none, of, none of them showed up in the summer when they had all this severe yeah, weather. I think, I think we had one or th I think we had one or two. Yes, I think we had one or two. We had one or two. Um, um, there you go. Right in uh, in 1877, the third Mar the third Marquis of Butte commissioned William Burgess, uh, the great architect, to restylize Cardiff, Caerphilly, Castell Coch, and. Um, Cog Church in the Vale of Glamorgan and various other places. Um, and one of the things that the Marcus of Butte was interested in was history. Basically, he cleared all the, um, the peasants from outside the walls of Cardiff Castle, shut them back on the street, demolished their houses, and revealing... <laughs> and they did the same at Caerphilly. Did you know the, the, the walls at Caerphilly that you see today were all rebuilt um, by the, all the outside cladding, right? It was all a, it, it was all a shell, like, it, you know, the, the core of the building. All the cladding was rebuilt um, in the late 1870s. 
The entire Caffili outside uh, castle is completely yeah, fake. But that there, the under, the underhang there, the underhang there, is actually um, Roman. That's blue lias limestone, and that yeah. comes from Barry, and, and through barges only, from Barry. Haven't they only just revealed that? No, that's been there for a while. Years. That's been that that's been there that's since eight, the 1877. Oh, right. okay. Shh. Okay. And there you go. They they even reconstructed one of the gates at the back. Which is actually based upon the Roman floor plan. When they excavated the Roman floor plan, looked beautiful. So they decided to directly build from it. Um, strange enough, it's so beautiful that, but it's not really used for anything. Mm. And look at that again—the entire length there, and even the um, hexagonal towers. And actually, one of the nicest, one of the nicest memories I've got is going into Cardiff Castle, right? Looking at the back of there, we can actually touch the stone and make love to it because there's all the pet logs there. And you can touch the stone and you can comb it and you can look at it and you can look at the mortar. It's pure and utter sex and ec ecstasy to me, right? Oh. Um, and and, and, I, and I, I can stand there and love it and make love to it for hours. It's beautiful. And it, it, it is still the, the original dress stone that the Romans would have felt as well. Oh. One of my friends was having a picnic against that. Yeah, that. <laughs> Found a Roman coin <laughs> on the wall. Did, Did he? Is it Roman? No. We won't say anymore. <laughs> hey, can I can I tell you about can I, can, I, can, I, can I tell you about the time I was on an archaeological excavation at Boverton, right? And there was this stone carver who lives down there, right? Long story long story short, Danny, um, he, he he carved he, he carved oh, a part no. of his his male member a, a full oh, life size version oh, with the veins yeah. and everything in yeah. it, right? Oh, um, and uh, a ba basically, right? <laughs> I was doing this archaeological excavation and watching brief, and the manager didn't know this as, as well, right? So they knew I was going to be turning up at 10 o'clock, so they got there early. So they, they buried this, this stone phallus oh. in the soil, right? And I was excavating along, and I couldn't, oh, I no. couldn't help it. Uh. I thought, oh my God, I found an absolutely massive dog. <laughs> so I was waving it in the air, right? And then the manager ran across, he said, oh shit. We'll have to close down the whole the whole project <laughs> now because you found this part of a of a major important statue. And one of the one of the members of the work that day wanted to go off work to get, get to a football match or something. It's typical carry on Phil. He, he said to the manager, he said, "Oh look, you know it's it's um, it, it's Roman, and we're going to have to put a stop on the work today. None of us are going to be able to work today. I have to get the archaeologist to excavate it, and so on." Um, and unfortunately, the guy who found it was laughing so much he had to come clean. Yeah. But but they could have had a day off work that day. I was so excited with finding this dong. Oh, and, and 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 my wife at the time the made a comment, and, and and we won't go. Oh. Right there you go. So that that's where we're talking about Cardiff Castle. Women, yeah. <laughs> and there you go. All the blue stuff here. Uh, as they were surveying it, that's that's the original wall all the way around the outside, and it's likely that this mound itself, because it's so secure. Um, and, and so strong that was probably constructed out of the stone from the wall on that side because the Normans used that side uh, to as the fortification and that side they they mainly demolished don't know why it Roman shore fort? Uh, shore fort? that's so what it's classed as that's what it's classed as I could you know in all the buildings for us in a way yeah I know fine it's good it's by the coast yeah. it's good Right. Okay. Um, I would go. I would go through all yeah. this detail. I would go through all this detail, but it covers an area of the the initial fort covered an area of twenty four acres, because there were different stages, um, and then um, and then it goes on to stage B, um, and that was an, a a much smaller area of about four acres. Um, and then they're talking about increasing. Uh, then it then it's just four acres again. And in the major final stage that they're building in Cardiff, if I quickly scan through this, if it gives us um, size of scale, it doesn't say. But if we go forward, I've got a plan of it. Oh, there we go. Those are the plans. I saw there was a river park, wasn't it? Yes. Oh. So as you can see, the, the early fort itself is huge. That's the twenty six acres, and then you've got the smaller forts. Right, and this is the larger fort at the end. This is the one. This one. This is the one that's there today. So the earlier fort is all buried underneath everything else, um, and there's a road going through it. Um, and this actually 
of the River Taff used to run lapping the sides of this wall here. Um, and because probably erosion, they decided to move it step back a bit. Um, and uh, so, so I don't want to do much more of this because I, I just... But there, there, there you go, a bit more of a close-up. And that hole there is called a putt log. That's the scaffolding. Um, now, this is the building that's going to be flattened. This is, this is the reconstructed building of the Roman bathhouse at, um, at Prestatin. We all know where Prestatin is in North, North Wales coast. There we go. Prestatin. There it is. And when you go up there, you need to speak like this. And they say, well, you must come from North Wales and you sound like a Dalek. <laughs> right. So anyway, the site was founded in 1934. Okay. Um, and uh, other work along the site, 1981. Um, some believe it's a Roman uh, military bathhouse that maybe have been built um, no later than about 150 years AD. They've been have lots of geophysical survey in there. They're talking about forts and so on. Um, but uh, they're saying that um, the, the bathhouse itself, as a result of further work, um, they deschedule the site and it's no longer got protection. It's smack bang in the middle of a housing estate and you can work out how long that's going to take to build upon. Uh, but I'll show you, and I, that's what it looked like and all the buildings intact, it's completely intact. No, not like that, no. but the four plan is. So what we've got... It wouldn't, it wouldn't have been on its own, though, would it? it no, it wouldn't have been associated with a whole foot. area. Yeah, exactly. Being... Yeah. So there would be... There's a cold plunge bath, changing room, a potisserum, I think. That, that's the name. Uh, a dop of dop, tritrum. There you go. A, a frigidarian, the, 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 um, the, clo the cold um, sort of bath there, trepidarium here, and the cold area. And with the furnace. So the furnace heats the first room, the hottest, then again, and then by the time you get to the end, there's no heat heating it. So, um, hang on a minute. Why are we on? Oh, how have I got Kalian? Kalwent there. Kalian. Oh, I forget Kalwent. Oh, no, yeah. Kalian. Well, nobody wants to see oh, it. But look at that. No. This this is the complete building that exists still for now, oh. until it's demolished. Oh. Oh. It looks good. It does look good. It's a lovely site, but it's. Wouldn't it be nice if they just left it in the middle of a big estate? Yeah. Yeah. Like, They've done that with some ruins in Neath. You can see bits of the Roman towers of the fort in, in Neath, still in the estate. Yeah. They do that with some... It, yeah, it would be great. Um, years, years ago, years ago, I, I wrote a letter to Cadu because it's getting badly damaged. And I said, right, can you, can you get the police on site um, next week or a certain day? Because I might actually go and start restoring the site and we're going to get the BBC and everything involved. Um, uh, uh, my wife at the time threatened to leave me if I was going to do it, so I didn't do it. But anyway, um, Michelle does it all the time, uh, leaves me. Anyway, the point is, is that now they're going to build on this site. No, they're going to build on it. That is wrong. They need to put foundations in. I know it's wrong. It's been descheduled. It's not protected. That was going to be the newt place, right? Oh, yeah, they moved the newts. They've moved the newts now. They've all bloody buggered off. Taylor Winsley have got the second newt place. There's no newt place anymore. No. It's not so good. Well, they, they and the uh, anyway, anyway, we digress. We could talk about this in, 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 a, in, a, in a class when we've got so much time. <laughs> right, there, there's, there's the barracks. We've quickly gone into Killian. There's the barracks at Killian, okay? And there's a bit of the wall and the latrines. And, and the corn drying kilns and stuff. Um, and you go over here, we've got the amphitheatre. You've got a nice bit of the wall. Um, you've got a bit of the... Uh, that's where the HQ used to be, uh, the, the Poughkeepsie for, for the site. That's the museum, and that over there is the bathhouse. There were lots of bathhouses in Killian, by the way. Um, and we've done that. So that's the amphitheatre, which we've mentioned a few times. And there's the amphitheatre now. This is what we believe. There's the, there's the um, large... There's the large um, site. Yeah, the last time we had a trip to Killian, it was so successful. But when I got home, Michelle was going to leave me because we had a big row. Um, ba basically, there was a woman on that. There was a woman. Oh, I you know, yeah, somebody somebody was slagging the, Michelle off, and I didn't defend her. And Michelle wasn't happy. And oh god, oh, it's not. It, it, it sometimes it don't go well. Don't go well. 
did call the other woman a slut to her face, so it didn't really work out well. Anyway, so, um, <laughs> there, anyway, there's the Roman site, there's the amphitheatre, the barrack blocks oh. are over there, and bits of the wall surviving. Um, um, are you two having your own class there? Yeah. Like yeah. Farah? Was that the state? Was that the state? Those are the states. Those are the states. Exactly. I, I think I'm doing that because <laughs> she needs a bit of defending because she's only small. Um, perfectly formed. Is she perfect? Oh, she's got beautiful breasts. Anyway, no, she's she's a lovely, lovely woman. Can I? Recording that. Oh Christ! I have. Yeah. At least it was something in person. Yeah. No, they are really nice. You'll leave that bit in. They, yeah. re they are really nice. They are really shows, nice. Yeah. Um, I, I could tell you more about them, but I won't. <laughs> no, we don't want to know. Yeah. They're, they're, they're nicest breasts of a woman I've ever seen, actually. But anyway, so anyway, th this is the this is the barracks here. Yeah. Don't um, believe you won't prove. No, we don't. So, so what oh, I'm going to yeah, say quickly know. is, if you can see, they're divided into rooms. Th this is this is the the centurion's part of the building, and over here you've got room. You've got a parallel room. So you've got um, you've got a bit of a room which is accessible from outside and then there's there's a room at the back for, to put all their bits and pieces so you usually get eight, um, eight guys berthed in each one um, again there's a bit more of the amphitheatre um, and what have, what have we got um, what have we got at Killian uh, military military fortress um, it's um, built around AD 75 after the site at um, Usk uh, was abandoned in about um, AD five five six or something. Um, the the bath the bath block there was excavated in the nineteen seventies. It's it's one of a number that we know about. There's a, actually a bathhouse next door to the amphitheatre. If you look, it's a little one. It's got the uh, most complete amphitheatre in Britain. Sections of fortress walls, and the only remains of Roman legionary barracks um, standing anywhere in Europe, which I which I don't agree with. There are lots of barracks on display that are not legionary barracks, but I'm sure there's other legionary barracks on display. So there you go. There is actually one problem with this, right? What you see here, here and here are reconstructed on the footings of what's below, yeah. right? Yeah. Um, and these are actually, these, these are actually um, quite larger barracks, to be honest with you. These are legionary sized barracks, but usually in a length of years, there'd be a centurion in the back and that there would be about 10 berths of eight men. So one, two, three, four, five, six. There's, there's a few more than that, but uh, probably other rooms for other purposes as well. And this is a turret, latrines over here, and corn drying kilns and so on, and ovens. Where did they get the water from? Um, the, 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 the stream. Uh, no! They, <laughs> It's a it's a leisurely yeah. base, oh, a leisurely base. It, it had an aqueduct <coughs> leading into it anyway, so it's a leisurely base. So they got flowing water all over the place, and we know they got lead piping because they've excavated them in this building. So lead piping and everything. So and they had wooden piping as well, with metal collars, um, stone piping. Um, so this is what's left of the um, outside pool, at the at the um, Roman leisurely baths inside the city. That there is, yeah. And there, there again, a bit, but just a few quick things. Five, six minutes. Uh, amphitheater. This is one. This is um, one of the entrances into the amphitheater. Um, oh, so wooden stuff on top of the yeah, there would have been. Thing, yeah, yeah. yeah. Oh. Um, here, this is this is reconstructed out of all material from the Roman site. You can see bits of um, lots of bits of Roman masonry and tiles in this. This is the Hanbury Arms, which was a, a, a medieval tower that was built. Bit of mosaic, um, and there you go. Lead piping, bet you wish you had asked now. Yeah, quite quite chunky bits of lead piping. Now, there's a bit of a myth about lead piping, right? When you've got, they say that the Romans went nuts because they had all this lead piping. But when you've got loads of lime in it, right, the lime lines, yeah, and coats it, and eventually no lead comes through. Fact. So you just got poisoned in the beginning. <laughs> I don't want to confuse people. Only when you've got hard water, that's right. Yeah. 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 Ah, right. <laughs> got you, got you. <laughs> Glen Getty, exactly. Um, and there you go. This is. Even had Christmas trees. 
yeah, that that was a sat Saturnalia Christmas tree. Saturnalia Christmas tree. Saturnalia Christmas tree. Yeah, I do. Um, and you've got this is one of the this is one so obviously there would have been eight of these in a room uh, and all of this would have been kept in a separate room behind so separate room behind and there you go that's right I've put all that stuff keeping yellow French letters and stuff that's the man king Kathy's still got one of them, but there's loads of men in it. <laughs> no, no man has ever been to Kathy's house and been allowed out. <laughs> no, they're all alive. That's the point. So, so bas basically, um, this this is the um, this is what you're looking at with the barrack house. Um, and what I'm going to say, we're actually coming very close to the end now. That's what we're going to see in Colchester in October, the Balkan Gate. Yeah. Keith's going along that, and Kathy's going on it. Um, Dirty Sid's going on it. Filthy Rog. Filthy Pete's going. Dirty Bill, they're all going. <laughs> <laughs> what, was there, what were those dishes that were right by the building? So Sid. Looks like it, doesn't it? What ditch? What ditch? Right there. No, that's a latrine. There would have been a wooden box above this, right? Oh. And this is where you'd have sat your behind. All the stuff would have gone down. And it, and you'd, mm. you'd have used that sponge on the stick to. <laughs> so, right. Yeah, the, yeah, why? Well, yeah, that's a bit. Too, right. yeah. But it was covered over. Yeah, it was covered over, but you know. Yeah, exactly. You'd have still smelt it. Oh, Ellen, let them believe us the other way, please. Um, and that's a bit of Roman wall in the Colchester again. Um, I used to know a woman that. <laughs> We're nearly going to do it. <laughs> We're nearly going to do it. Right. We've got X, Y, and Z. Right. So basically, today, um, up near Adrian's Wall at South Shields, a, a, a suit of arm, a suit of chainmail was found with thirty thousand iron rings. Was discovered by an archaeologist inside of what is believed to be a junior officer's room in a barrack block near the eastern end of the Third Reich, oh, the eastern end of the fort. Before, just before the invasion. Okay. <laughs> I've seen that. Right. I've seen the South Shields. Right. Thing. Anyway, they believe they believe they date from about AD three hundred, right? So that's another that's one find. And then archaeologists dig um, unearthed Roman army treasures. Um, so what we're talking about? Um, here we go. The most important find ever in British archaeology. Um, weapons and siege equipment are some of the best preserved um, bits of armor ever discovered anywhere in the world. Ever. Yeah, anywhere. We found waterlogged in Roman Carlisle, along with that woman I used to be engaged to. Um, is she waterlogged? Is she still there? Yeah, she is still there, yeah. She's still waterlogged. Yeah, she's still waterlogged. Um, and, uh, ba basically, um, Lugavalium, that, that's where we're looking at. And, and coming to, we're at the end of the lecture now, so I'm going to say, uh, the next day school is the 1st of March, Friday, Chambers of Prehistory. Um, chuck this in here. That that that's basically um, the the, um, the the scale armor that they would have worn, okay? The scale armor. It was quite happy and it was quite heavy and bronze. And underneath that would have been a, a, a leather um, jerkin or something, something like that. Um, and then wool. what? And then wool, and then wool, wool, and then, and then the naked flesh. Um, yeah. Um, <laughs> This this itself is um, what part of the next lecture on the first of March, um, and that there, the chainmail. They counted each individual one there, and they they unravelled it and glued it back together. Thirty thousand. Yeah, yeah. Of course they did. Of course they did. Um, oh, that's um, Pentra Eifen, but you'll know about that on the first of March. I'm not going to tell anymore, so you've got to pay for that lecture. Days ago. Um, this one itself is actually from the Third Reich. No, this is from Germany. 
Berlin. That was found in Berlin. Okay. Mm. Yeah. So they rushed yeah. Yeah. They rushed it all together. That's that, that's a bit more about the lecture on the first of March. And guess what? The what? ending image. This. Are there any questions? Oh, Angus, do it. Yeah. What's that? Is that chainmail? Oh, that's chainmail, yeah. yeah. Right. Chainmail. Right. Angus is going to show you his bit. We've been waiting for this. I have more than one. Yeah. <laughs> I am a man of many bits. And all that's been said on that. That's from Wanky. It's <laughs> 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 Wanky. <laughs> <laughs> Wanky, no on the top, the writing. W A N G Q I U I. Looks like Wanky off to me. <laughs> Do your worst. Right, okay. And 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 ah. your and your fibula brooch. Whilst he's doing that, are there any questions? So no, thank you, sir. Fort. What? Yeah, the boys know it's a Roman fort when it's rectangle or square. Uh, but yeah, something like that. Yeah, yeah. Playing card shape, yes, yes. From playing card shape, yes. Slender, I've got a quick word with you at the end. I've got an OCD thing, so don't worry. It's nothing to do with you. It's to do with me. So don't worry. Don't worry for me because you're OCD. Yeah. Right. Anyway, so Karen, have, have a look. Yeah, look at this. Yeah. It's a it's a brooch. It's a Roman brooch. A brooch. There would have been a pin inserted in there. Pin, yeah, through your toga. Like a safety pin. Yeah. Where's it from? Is it key? Oh, where's that from? It's on his bag. Wang. Was it black? In China. Around has got to China. Yeah. Are you sure it's not a reproduction? It's a bit. Oi! I guess answer the silly. Hang on. Too many questions. It's the same question. We're all asking the same question. Right, right, right. Is it real? Yeah, it looks, you know, it looks, it looks actually good, but well, they, they've they've cut, cut, mm. you know, it's, it's, it's the way it's been preserved. Yeah, it mm. does look a little I've oh, seen, put, I've seen better ones, and they were a lot oh, more money. Is it coated? Oh right. Oh, yeah. Stop it. oh yeah. you mean, yeah. you mean dirtier? Oh, where it was found. Dirty, no. a bit like Glenda. No, I'm just saying this, you know, when I saw your piece. No, they were bigger and in better condition. The, the pins are all broken. Yeah, those. yeah. Did you oh, know? Oh, that was good. I want you to bring that in yeah. class on uh, Thursday. I want a feel of it. A oh, yeah, she made it by herself. Oh, that one there would have been green enamel. There's a little tiny bit of the enamel still in there. Yeah, you have a day. You can pay for like three hours' time. And this would have been a brooch, would it? How much did you pay for? I got it like half price on Zoom. My friend did it, you know, did like a blacksmith course in Harrison. Right, whilst whilst you're talking, any questions? Have you all enjoyed today? Has it been worth coming? Yes! Good. Including Cathy having a bloody battered <laughs> fish and she wasn't meant to. So they're Roman, are they? Roman? What? It smells very orangey, doesn't it? It smells like allergy in my nose time. That's all. <laughs> Who's using wet wipes? Oh, it's hand wash. Hand wash. I, I used hand wash. Oh, don't. Oh, don't. Mm. It's disgusting. Well, they're lovely, beautiful yeah, pieces beautiful. anyway, you know. <laughs> yeah. to I wonder if that that was and I've got to give you a one. Guy who's, Five of um, He found that outside just now. An engineer. Yeah. Um, oh. But basically, he's the guy who bought all the topsoil from White Farm. Oh. Um, oh. 27 oh. cannonballs out of it. Like oh. Oh. He told me it about. Um, uh, Colcott. He's in Colcott. Ten Lane. What's Colcott? Colcott. Oh, so he's yeah, in the road. Sam Main. Sam Main. It's where the. He's preserved them. Um, in the Civil War, the two yeah. were, one of the armies camped there before the Battle of St. That's what all the yeah, stuff That was my there. first battle I ever saw. It's come down all the time. <laughs> you don't look old enough. Oh. <laughs> but you're a royalist, hot aren't lips, you? Hot lips and Bertha, mm. big Bertha got stuck in the mud. Ah. Get a tractor together. Now. Your cannons oh. work. So yeah, he bought that. I, I didn't know you were artillery. I know of Roman Wells we are now oh. in the motorway. So who, which person are you talking about? Um, I forgot his name. He's got a stall in a pumping station now. So can you find oh, yeah. some yesterday? Mm -hmm. We go right, there. you get, get all the, get all the cups over station, there. Right, hang fire. 
left hand side. Like, uh, Anne, can you put what this in your pocket? Like He's got lots more of these Ooh. as well. Go near the door and then watch this. Oh. I can't just hold it. Safe, you know, um, go straight well, through the main doors. Imla turned the thing off. Street gone. It's just on the right. It's like it's first or second. Oh, it's 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 but, but can I ask you, did you all eat your... Oh, yeah. Not the chips, but did you all eat the thing that, that, that you had? Yeah, yeah, I know. Did you all eat the thing that you had? Yeah, you, had you had the thing, you had, the, the <laughs> extra thing. I just want to know. Yeah, you liked it. Yeah, no, that's fine. I have an extra thing. Where's my Have you... Yesterday, I had to give Bill 50 quid. I was I was crying, one not <laughs> I was going. Why did you have to give him 50 quid? Yeah, because he gave me a cheque for 210 and he needed and, um, 50 quid change. Like oh, that's a bit much, isn't it? <laughs> Oh, because he's, he's going to not have a single room. He's no, he's not going to have a single room, no. Right, could somebody pass well, me that you, mug, please? It to me, I'm it's quite not happy to take it Oi, and anyone who wants a quick look at this, have a look now. If anyone wants a copy, let me know. I don't want to send only three people going in this car. Well, I thought it was one, two, three, plus oh, driver, isn't it? Yeah, here, here we want one, two, three, plus, driver. plus me. Oh, oh, yeah. Right, what well, I'm going to do, I've got to get out of here in a minute. It's just I didn't pay for a ticket on the way. I oh, wanted to oh, yeah, I would have, I have come through the gate yeah. without paying. So, <laughs> <laughs> there we go. No. I didn't take it for so much. Oh, 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 my God. Don't do that to her. She's getting excited. She's like, you know what she's like? I'll tell you in the car doing that. Oh, please don't. And you go 50 quid, put it in your pocket, otherwise I'll keep it. Go on, it's yours. Five pounds in your pocket. Anyway. It's a, yeah, it's a recon job, yeah. It's a reconstruction job. See, if you ever come here on Tuesday, you can, you can fiddle with all these things. Right, so I'm glad you've all come. What time is it Tuesday? Tuesday, we usually hear about by 11, so if you come, just come. And how long is it um, usually about mm, ten past twelve or something. I'll be in next on Tuesday coming out then. Well, oh, you'll be, Dennis comes as well. Dennis comes as well. Oh. Anyone want to use the loo? Go for it. Go on, you bin. Move. Get off. <laughs> oh, God. It's sexy deprived. Oh. Oh. Yeah, okay. Anyway, go and get a card. It's crazy, isn't it? Take care. I know. I thought. Well, I will. I can't keep going. Where are we going? Bye. 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 Because ah. I have something from the Civil War and I didn't know anything. You're still going anyone. Who's going with who now? Oh. Where's Glenda going? Oh, you're, you're I'm still here. Oh, no, you're going anyway. Yeah, anyway, because these are going Penny. first. I don't oh, know what with them. Sit down. I'm, I'm not going with them. Um, the site of the <laughs> army and tank line. As soon as he got wounded, like, they were all out there. Yeah. What are they? I'm still you're lucky. They're like the you're lucky. Just the west, and I didn't realise anything really had got through the west and St. Pagans, really. Apparently, yeah. Ellen! Yeah, the um, Ellen. They camped the night before. Stop chatting him up, right? I'm going then. Move. Um, yeah, she's chatting him up. Nice hey, by the way, Ellen, nice right? Nice right. Colour coordination, top mask. Nice, nice to meet you. Um, oh, and you, take care. Like, uh, uh, I'm not in the the Yeah. I am not in the 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 but do you need something? Oh, well, I have to. Oh. I, I normally, I have to have different stuff, but yeah. I can't, can't take that. <laughs> <laughs> but I sometimes bring stuff to say Oh, here, it was in my pocket all along. Oh, right, I was so looking say Tate Allen gets the headache. And it was in my pocket all along. You never know who you would use. I usually got cold, cold in my. I had yeah. to do an earlier, I had banging headache. Oh, did you? Yeah. Mm. 
it's quite low. Yeah, that was, that yeah, was. you know what? Yes. That was pretty successful. I got to be honest. What, what do you think? I do. That was good, Joe. That was yeah. good, yeah. Like, that yeah, was well, good. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I, I thought Adam was being bloody serious about the time. Did we, we had to wait for Adam. We had to go and find him. And all that with the... Oh, God. Pat and Anne getting lost. Oh, Pat flipping that out. That was funny. Oh, Ellen didn't think it was. But I think she was, I think she was actually joking. <laughs> well, I hope so. <laughs> I was just looking for Anne. It was funny because I was ringing your phone and it was sitting next to me. Anne went one direction and I went the other. So no wonder. <laughs> I found Adam. One direction. Oh. So what I'm going to do is I'm, gonna, I'm just going to chuck everything in a bag and have to tidy up on Have you stuff. told me what you need to tell me? Um, <laughs> I, I will, I, I will, um... Go on, what is it? <laughs> it's embarrassing. Uh, it's really oh, embarrassing. no, 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 no. <laughs> no, 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 no. What? <laughs> It's you gonna be embarrassing. If, ca if Carl says it's embarrassing, yeah, it's, it's going to be very embarrassing. Oh, yeah. I think we should sing just in case we <laughs> <laughs> still hear them. La 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 Something's gone wrong. Yeah. I know. Or right, it's not, Pat. Or it's I'll, not I'll, coming up um, in a wait, wait, wait there, Glenn. Um, Anne, I'll see you. I'll see you on what Thursday. Oh, yeah. <laughs> oh. I suppose a box standard thing would be spray it with some WD-40. See if that will uh, yeah. do something. What are you going to do to me now? How did this fit in the railing? Was it on the top the side? <laughs> oh no, that was that. There, hole drilled in the ground, plunk it in there, concrete. I know she's a bit butch, but oh. that's, that's a bit unkind. So that was at like the bottom of the rail. Yeah, yeah. The rail and, and it would have been a lippier rail along yeah, there. Hang on. A bit like Carl, it would have been lippier. Uh, and then oh, oh, right. Oh. So would been, that would have been coming out a bit more. Yeah. Well, don't fear out the fact that, wait a minute. Right. Oh, yeah. oh, yeah. Right. I put that away years ago. Right. Right. And I just have a quick word with Glenda and I'll see you on Thursday. I need to use your the loo. Take care. Nice oh, seeing you. Nice um, meeting you. See you. Nice you. I go, Jessa. Mm. Oh, is it is it open or locked? Don't be too loud. Is this a good Angus? Giant here. Go, 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 are you serious? Good, thank you. Thank you. We don't talk about the space. Yeah, I'll see you in a minute. Yeah, gotta tell you. You know what she's on about? No, he's... I know, I was joking that one. You know what I was. I was joking on that one. You can take an influence with you. Oh, right. Do you know what? It. When we went to that... Um, the pump house yesterday. I've got loads of stuff in the house that I kind of we downsized eight years ago. But I've got loads of stuff and I wanted to kind of sell it. But when I go up there, some of it is really rough there. But we looked at some nice cabinets mm -hmm. and old chests and that. And there's a big uh, church pew and everything. And I said, to her, Aren't they love the big, yeah, they're beautiful. You could make cushions on it and that. And I said, to her, Aren't they lovely? And then I got this idea that because I like to watch paranormal and alien stuff. But I got this idea that they might be haunted. So bringing anything to my house like that, I'd be haunted. So that's it. Did you pay, cleanse it? I can cleanse it. I couldn't cleanse anything. Yeah, I mean, Could I you cleanse? My oh my god! I, I was, oh and god. she's had. She, 
great stuff. She was telling me yesterday everything's gone really well. Oh, right. I, I guess I've never had anything happen to touch wood, but I just think to myself, oh, there's some beautiful cabinets out there. And now, look, I'm going to have to go I'm anyway. She doesn't wear Look, thanks for that. Can't we all Don't welcome. think about it. Don't think about <laughs> it. So look, seriously, yeah. now, have, you, have yeah, you enjoyed I that bet. today? I did. I loved it. Are you coming to the next one? I see. All depends what we're doing, see. Cause all right, then. Okay. Be your king, yeah? Bye. Nice to meet you. Oh. Bye. Bye. Take care. Take care. I will remember that, though, if I do get anything.